Welcome to Black Love Matters, where this serves a therapy session for figuring out adulthood. Loving each other. Or find our Anna Brock and Michelle. Or Jay-Z and Beyonce. Or this episode, we're going to go with Barbara Jordan and Nancy Earl. Now, y'all know it's Pride Month. So we had to go in the archives and find some black love and representation when it comes to the LBGTQ community. Now, let me start with Miss Barbara Jordan. So Ms. Barbara Jordan was an American lawyer, educator, and liver- leader of the civil rights movement. She was the first African-American elected to the Texas Senate after Reconstruction and the first Southern African-American woman elected to the United States House of Representatives. She was also the first African-American woman to deliver a keynote address at the Democratic National Convention. Among numerous honors, she received the Presidential Medal of Freedom. Her passion for the rule of law and Constitution were well known. She once stated, my faith in the Constitution is whole. It is complete. It is total. And I'm not going to sit here and be idle spectator to the um, desolation and the subversion the destruction of the constitution she also fought for government societal societal recognition of people especially people of color declaring uh, declaring from their position in the house judiciary committee she said i felt somehow for many years that george washington and alexander hamilton just left me out by out my mistake but through the process of amendment interpretation and court decision i have finally been included in air quote we the people Jordan was um, never public about her sexual orientation or relationship she had with Nancy Earl. However, towards the end of her death, she made it known that she was her companion and partner for over 20 plus years. And that is when she came out. And that's when she's been known as the first lesbian to have been elected to the United States Congress. Bad bitch contest. Who went first place? Mm. Barbara. I see y'all here, Barbara. Well, I was reading some of her stats. What is they talking about? They were talking about what? The first... Texas African American led it led it to the Texas Senate after Reconstruction. That sounds like oppression, like just that. <laughs> that and she's like a lesbian, right? Mm-hmm. Lay it on top of that, and in Texas, right? How did this go? First of all, let's talk about discretion. <laughs> and sis didn't really, you know, come out openly more so to the end of her life. Right. It, and meanwhile, she was with Nancy since the 60s. Right. Like she was with Nancy's for a minute. Mm-hmm. Like this was her compa- This was her partner for over 20 plus years. I could just only imagine. <laughs> actually, I cannot imagine the, the bullshit she had to go through. Shout mm-hmm. out to them. What you think, Nams? That is amazing. It's more that, than amazing. Naomi, what you do today? Thank you for the black history. What? <laughs> Every day is black, black history. Black history did I give, pride. Did I give you a whole... <laughs> I'm telling you, we was falling behind because last, like I said, last month was Asian the Heritage and Pacific Islander Month, and we ain't say cat, dog, or nothing. Nothing about no Asian. Ain't nothing Asian. Nothing. No one that's all part of the family, too. So mm-hmm. I really want to make sure I do the justice as we're going into Pride. That's what's up. Anyway, who is you? I'm Nero. And I'm Nayambi. And this is episode 256, y'all. Hey, happy Friday. <laughs> Be sure to leave one, two, three, four, five star rating review on Apple Podcasts and on Stitcher and follow us on all forms of social media at Black Love Matters. Uh-huh. And it is my favorite day. What is it? It's shout out Friday. Oh, y'all showed out. Y'all are showing out this Friday. Niran was so happy. Where my he, sure kept, he kept, please don't do this. Don't don't adjust the sound. Don't. Shout out Friday. Why he like to do that? It couldn't even do it. He like to do that little ghetto echo. Hey, don't be hating on my. You remember uh, y'all uh, used uh, to have a skating party? Oh, there was. Is it doing me? Yeah, 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 yeah. Shout out, Friday. When you give niggas new things, you can't have nice things. Just like we no. tell our um, when our family come visit, like when my mom and dad, I'm like y'all don't like nice things, so I feed you Taco Bell. Oh, speaking of that, I got something. That I, I put it for my saying. You talk about nice things. Yeah, sometimes folks don't like nice things. I don't know if I talked about how I got my mom a Pandora bracelet. Yeah. And what happened? Oh, the saga still continues? I'll talk about it in my chat. Oh, the saga still continues. So we've got the bracelet. It didn't fit. We had to do searching for finding it. No, baby. Don't don't take my joy. Okay, I won't take your joy. I'm going to do it for my check-in. All right. Oh, is it my check-in now? Yes, Did you do is. everything you're supposed to do? Yeah. One, two, three, four, five-star rating review on Apple Podcasts. And on Stitcher, follow us on all forms of social media. At Black Love Matters. You know this is Shout Out Friday. So this is what we do. You know, you leave a voicemail. You shoot us an email. You leave a five-star review. We're going to shout y'all out. Yeah. So if y'all want to be on there, y'all want to get shouted out. Yeah. That's what y'all got to do. You want to talk your stuff, you talk your stuff. You talk your shit, you talk your shit. Mm-hmm. And that's what you do. I agree. What's going on? Actually, I don't have nothing. I'm so happy it's Friday. Work has been just work. You know, I love my job. My job is, uh, 
I don't know if easy is the word, but it's fluid, right? Like it's very fluid. It's never a point where I leave work and I'm like, what are we doing? We going in circles. Like it's very clear, like my next steps and what I'm doing. Sometimes just the work just continues, right? There's never necessarily an end point, which can be a little frustrating, but that's good. But y'all, Black Mirror done came out. Oh, shit. I've only watched... 20 minutes of the first episode and I'm hooked. Then I went on social media to see what you niggas were talking about and y'all are dragging Miley Cyrus for her last episode. So, I didn't even know Miley Cyrus is in this season. Spoiler alert, nigga. I didn't either. Oh, I mean, well, shit, when you turn, when you hit play, nigga, I'm sure that's gonna be the white first white face you see. Oh. With the money she done took. But, what's his name? You made me forget. Um, Not Archie. What's the black man? Which one? Um, Daniel Kaluuya? What? I don't even know who you're talking about. From um, Black Panther. No, this is an That OG. was in the first. Um, oh, you talking about Black one with Man. the bloodshot eyes? Yeah. And then he, yeah, no, that ain't him. Oh. No, it's the guy who's in the Avengers. The black man in the Avengers. Don't say, it ain't Don Cheeto. Oh. It's the. <laughs> yeah. Can you just Google Black Mirror first episode? Samuel Jackson? Shut up. No. Because <laughs> his name, as soon as you start saying other people. Oh, Mackie? Yes. He's in the first episode. And all I know is about polar bears, virtual reality, his homeboy. Like, actually, that's something I think we're going to get in tonight and watch. Because I really want to watch it and unpack it. What is Mackie's first name? Anthony Mackie. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, he's in it. In the first 20 minutes, I was hooked. I just didn't have the energy or the bandwidth to stay up and watch it. So, yeah, I am a fan of Black Mirror. Um, I definitely will have some type of update for y'all on Monday, what I th- think of them. Um, looks like Miley done ruined the last episode, though. Everybody said that's the worst episode of Black Mirror has mm, ever been. I bet. I said, damn. Miley ruined everything. Why y'all hate no Miley? Because. She listen, ain't, she ain't listen, Billy. Listen, Hannah Montana has been coming for throats for a long time. She ain't Billy, though. And you niggas act like you ain't watch Hannah Montana. I didn't. Yeah. Well, did you have cable? <laughs> hey. <laughs> Bootleg. I know you did it. Um, so that. And then also, I've been going back and forth with my friends on text. Did y'all see that woman in that helicopter who kept spinning? Mm-mm. Did you see it? Didn't I send it to you now? You sent it to me. I what? Look at it yet. Oh, you went. Oh, near him. Pull it up. Pull it up. You won't even put it on the. Uh, I don't think there's no volume to it. It ain't no volume. I don't think it is. But. It's not funny, right? When I first seen it, I was worried because I was like, "Oh, she dead." Because you kept, you kept, you saying you can't, you can't stop. Watching. I could like it's one of those things where you could not look it away as an American. I could not look away. Oh shit! So like they were trying to rescue her. Man, this was a seventy-four-year-old lady who was going hiking in Arizona, and she fell and hurt her hip. Mm-hmm. So they had to sky lift her out, right? Because all the the. Um, the crates and you know you know mm-hmm. the hills and shit the rocks and shit yeah, yeah. right and so when they were pulling her up i guess one of the levers or something broke she was still attached mm-hmm. but it kept spinning and we're not talking about a casual spin we're talking about fidget spinner levels oh, shit look at that like, i would have been dizzy throwing the fuck up. i think she did over 175 turns and then at the end like i'm oh lord she dead <laughs> And then the old lady came out and was like, I'm fine. I'm just a little dizzy and nauseous, but I'm okay. I'm like, first of all, this is a survivor from being 74 in hiking alone. Y'all going to put that damn chopper back down. What? Could you, oh, no, the chopper can't go back down. You imagine what to do if it hit the ground. Shit, y'all got to flow back down and straighten me out. It was, I, and then one of my friends, Nadeem was going back and forth. Like, she probably thought she was dying. You know, that's how you just <laughs> think death is. You like, death is near. Death is spinning. <laughs> 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 but that's all i got uh what's going on with you now uh so back to this nice things um conversation, conversation. Yeah. so naomi didn't talk to my mama talked me into get my mama this damn pandora bracelet because uh-huh. she's like your mama said you want one i said you sure she like, said she never... wanted one explicitly that was not even a beat and i was like bush. when when did you talk to her about this i was like i ain't never heard her talk about a pandora bracelet you don't listen i do listen uh-huh so I get her this Pandora bracelet. I don't know what size she wear. Pandora got random arbitrary ass numbers. I don't know what the fuck this shit mean. So mm-hmm. I buy her the Pandora bracelet. She get it. And then she's like, I couldn't open it up. Oh my God. So I tried to roll it on my wrist. Helpless. And it didn't work. Uh, oh, Pandora, you got a, it's a class. It's a class. It's, oh, okay. But you know, my mom got my long clack clackly clackly nails. So she got them claws. Mm. And so I couldn't get it work. <clears throat> Oh, my goodness. And so I tell my sister, like, you know, she needs some help, blah, 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 because she got one. Yeah. She's like, oh, I couldn't get any help. I got nails, too. Oh, everybody, I everybody fuck out my cute. Nails. Everybody cute. I said, y'all got these grown-ass grandkids over there. 
Somebody figure it out. And I'll be, why don't you send him a new to- YouTube video? No. <laughs> she got one. She know how to open that bitch up. Oh, my goodness. So they said it's too small. I said, all right. I Googled, like, the nearest Pandora store. I said, the Pandora store is at this mall on these intersections. <laughs> oh, you got to go there. Hey, near, I'm in the car with my, where, where, that Pandora store? It's in the mall. Oh, my gosh. So, they get to the mall. Where at in the mall? Nigga, I don't know. I ain't never been to this goddamn mall. It's in the mall. Mm-mm. Where else would the park at? I don't know. Macy's. Exactly. Is it in Macy's? Nigga, no. Help them. And I'm like... And then, you know, they FaceTime me. I said, you got these grown-ass kids in the back seat? Why don't you ask one of these kids with one of these goddamn iPhones to figure it out? Exactly. Yeah, I do remember you telling me that. That made me a little worried about, look, your nieces and nephews. I don't... How old is they? These niggas is a freshman and a junior in high school. Sure. Figure it out. Sure. Sure. Just keep them lifted. I finally got it. I got an opener, too. I didn't even know Pandora oh, had, had an opener. opener. Oh, like they got, a little. Yeah, they got like a little opener to open it up Shaggers. for people that got claws. <laughs> I think you're supposed. Never mind. This is why you can't give people nice things. No, yeah. And from can. now on, I'm just gonna follow my my intuition and buy gift cards that they ain't gonna use. <laughs> so I'm just gonna put twenty dollars on the gift card and tell them it's a hundred dollar the gift card, and I know it ain't gonna use it anyway. Because my mama got two gift cards from Red Lobster that she she loves Red Lobster. She swears she loves it. Wait, you just keep going to the same restaurant? Yes. I just keep adding it up. Well, shit. First it was 50. Now you got 100. But baby, you can eat everything you want, mama. Go mama. twice if you want to. Mama. Mama. She still well, ain't Well, this time been. we go home, let's just ask. I ask, can I have one? That's why I don't get nice niggas. I don't get niggas nice, nice. things. Oh, my goodness. Because of this shit. Mm. And he got me all riled up. I Jesus. bet. I bet. Other than that, you know, we got some house guests, and they're afraid of dogs. Don't do that. <laughs> they're afraid of dogs, and they're afraid of Mabel. <laughs> I wish do I could show you all this video, <laughs> but I can't. But <laughs> let's just say they damn near lost their mind and jumped on the bed with their shoes on <laughs> just to get away from Mabel. Uh-uh. Mabel is... Uh, 24 inches tall, not even that, 12 inches tall and nine and a half pounds. <laughs> Whatever. No, Nero an instigator, though. Nero and Nero like, who here now? Like, Nero love to push people out of their comfort zone, but soon somebody even tell him, soon somebody say K- to him. I've been pushed I, out I, of my I comfort triv- zone. I've triggered, triggered, and they told, stole my um, gifts for Christmas. They have. Jesus. Nobody be caring. I have been pushed out of my comfort zone. Nigga when was a, the last time you got pushed out your comfort tough zone? Tough mother. When, have how any of y'all mo- niggas did that how, shit? How many? That's, first of all, you're a lie. How many, how many times y'all niggas listen, did tough mother? Listen, listen. Climbing listen. up rocks and shit. Got white boys yelling, woo, listen, in your ear. What is the definition of being, what do you define as being pushed out your comfort zone? Shit. A lot. No, I broke no, down. No, I cussed the white boys out about to fight them niggas all to get through this to fucking. See, now nah, this is see, this is what black men do. They, facts. What is the definition of being pushed out of comfort zone? Doing something that you usually don't do or traditionally don't do. Yeah. Last time I checked, you run marathons, but that ain't you tough cycle, that you ain't do tough all this types of training. So doing something that that's marathon mother. and cycle adjacent is not stepping out your comfort zone. Stepping out your comfort tough zone will be not. doing a diet bet. Well, why don't you do one then? I said you. I've done the diabetes before, so that's not even not my oh, okay. comfort zone. Oh, okay, come on. Because I've done it before, honey. Oh, oh, honey. And Linda. Linda. You know what? All my comfort zone is going to this fucking therapist. That's I got, um, I got zone. my direct report. But reports. a diabet, that ain't shit. I've done it before. Oh, look, he, now he's in ain't shit. He imagine he's gonna lose. Listen, no, uh, listen. All the diabetes I've done, I won. I blew oh. niggas out the water. Oh, taking all y'all niggas. Money. Oh, but that ain't my focus. So don't even oh. come to me. Oh, you take you all the money. money. Take all the money, nigga. And what you say? You looking all for coins. multiple streams of what? Income. Oh, and what to do with the but diabet? A diet bet <laughs> is not a surefire income. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, actually, I almost said something real shady. Okay. What I will say in my direct reports, I got them saying like Linda now, mm. like Linda and Carl. I'm like, Linda, what what is the problem? Like whenever we like get emails or somebody mm. say something, we don't understand Linda or they'll say, sir, ma'am, how can I help you? Mm. And I was like, oh, Lord, my pot, pot is sounding like a black woman from the Midwest. <laughs> sir, ma'am, how can I help you? They do it to people and dogs. Mm-hmm. Like, so say they're trying to get away in the dogs. They're like, ma'am, ma'am, can I just please get by? 
<laughs> oh man. Anything else? What else going on there? No, you know, that's it. I'm excited for the weekend. Yeah. You know, so R and R, get my you know, get my life together. You know, you know, you know, I am a serial hobbyist. But I'm also a tinkerer. So I got this old ass uh iMac that's been sitting on my uh desk for about a couple of years now. Yep. Now just collecting dust. My 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 latest feat is to turn this iMac into a Windows ten. So uh-uh. I've been on YouTube oh figuring this shit out. Oh, so so are you doing this because you want to do it? Or are you yeah. doing this because of distraction? No, I want to do it. I want to turn it into a Windows machine so I can do something else. I want to actually turn it into a Windows machine so I can use it as a server. That's cute. Like, how much... Is that just, like, energy power? Or is it, like... What, no. what do you got to open it up? Like, what is it? No, I ain't got to open it up. It's just, it's just energy, right? Like coding? Is that what coding. That is? Oh, okay. Yeah, you know. That's cute. So coding. now you want to go to the PC like world. What you mean? No. Now you like to do PC Android? No. The thing is, is that this computer is just so old that you know, I mean, you with Apple, t- yeah, Apple don't update shit like this. this is yeah, Apple just say you're canceled. So it's a 2006 computer, right? Yeah. So I mean, it it put in work. It did. It did its job. But the thing is, like, it's did still it turn a decent. On? Yeah, it works. So what happens when you try to hit a button? Does it works. It oh no, it works. You can actually hit a button now. Oh, so it works. Okay. But the thing is, it's just not updated. So oh, okay. the thing is. You know, after a certain amount, a certain amount of time, like companies just stop supporting it. Oh, so gotcha. It so you can't to, do anything else up tight. Yeah. So when gotcha. it comes to like Internet Explorer or not, but like Firefox, Chrome, saying. and things of that sort, none of that stuff is supported. So certain websites. So it's, support it just it. acts weird. So gotcha. if I turn it to a Windows computer, I'll be able to update all that stuff. Yeah. And do and work with it. Oh, shady Apple. Yeah, they be doing uh, shit like that. So they do. I, I'm looking forward to having this done. I feel by like weekend. Apple just shuts off your phone. They do. I feel like, like Apple be like you're done. Three years, you're out. You didn't have it too long. Goodbye. Do a playmate plan. I don't care if you're poor. (laughs) (laughs) Fuck that. Bring back flip phones. Remember you teased me about my flip phone? My flip phone was amazing because the battery lasts for 14 weeks. I got reception everywhere. Mm -hmm. When I used to have little maps. What was that app for? What was that? Maps too. Was that Google Maps or MapQuest? I think it was MapQuest. I don't know. All my sh- everybody phone be dead. My shit be still hanging in there. I got reception everywhere. <laughs> it was amazing. Mm-hmm. I wonder if I still got that. Yeah, you do. I seen it in your dresser. Did you see? Just in case, you never know what might happen, honey. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, you want to get into some pillow talk? <laughs> yeah, um, let's do some pillow talk. So, one thing I want to bring up, I actually seen it. Um, either in one of the papers i forgot which one i was looking at but it's this idea uh not idea it's basically just the use of words especially when it comes to um, athletes so it's basically the headlines is nba team drops owner air quote title to avoid offending um a little blurb says two nba teams have dropped the term owner um, following complaints by the Warriors, Draymond Green, who says the term is racially insensitive, insensitive the Philadelphia 70 sisters, sisters rebranded their uh, owners as managing partners in the Los Angeles Clippers now called their majority stakeholders a chairman. The, what? the NBA says it isn't um, pressuring leads as, um, executives to drop the war owner, but it's looking into it. I'm just curious. Well, you know, me and Nia they kind own of, the team. No, nigga, but you don't own people. I think it's more so the way in which, maybe it's even the way in which the athletes. They own the Lakers, but they don't own the players on the Lakers. Right. But I think when the players be like, oh, that's my owner. Right. It's just like how black people say when they like, especially this, I know, listen, y'all about to get mad. Black folks from HBCUs and black people from um, like Divine Eye organizations, they'd be like, oh, yeah, that's my dean. Or like the way that you say it, you'd be like, well, what do you mean? Mm-hmm. But like, it's weird. And I say, that's my dean, right? Like, say, if the person who brought you in, but I've seen people in professionals in higher ed, like, I'd be like, that's my dean, referring to like the dean of education. Mm-hmm. I'm like, what are you? That's not the, it's, the, it's like the order of words right. seems off to me. Well, but no, no this is some racist yeah, shit. Man. I'm with Draymond. What's this boy name? Draymond Green, them white, first of all, when it comes to any athletic sports, when the black man is running up and do- down the court, chasing the ball like Mabel, it's a fucking problem. Like Mabel. Like Mabel. I ain't going to say the other word. Like Mabel. For the white man's enjoyment. But, it, it did. That was, I do believe that was the intention. And y'all can believe the colonizers had the best in mind, too. But I think, it, I get you what you're saying. Owning it, money, right? The the brand, the likelihoods. Oh, yeah. I get that. That's but like, no. I believe them men be in them back rooms and they truly believe that they own these black men. 
I do believe that. I always say the same thing about y'all jobs. Okay. Who y'all call down. who who y'all call y'all founders? We don't say that word. Oh, what you call them? Uh, the, owners the founders they own xyz company no we don't yes. say no listen because we we words mean things we say stakeholders and founders mm-hmm. like even for me you know i work at this little place it's a startup yeah you know it's just it one person. owners no I don't he owned the place owners. and i worked there so for me i'll be like you know this, this is just a dude no but no, he's like say, this my owner no i never said he's the owner i said he, he the one that owned the place but i do tell him these basketball players but yeah that's the owner that's no. my owner well they got it wrong nigga they own the team, team. well be clear and maybe they need to, some better education and vocabulary to be, instead of being like, oh, that's my owner. No, nigga, yeah. you just own the team. But and I work for you. I get That's their employer. Exactly. But the terminology is owner. That is what I've heard. I've heard. I've not heard managing. I have not heard chairman. When it refers to any major athletic team, the old white man with the young wife wife that comes up and get the trophy is the owner. He owns the team. Oh, okay. I'm with Draymond. Change all that let's, shit. Let's see. Definition of owner. Somebody who own an object, it belongs to you, sole property. Come on, GRE. Come on. Oh. <laughs> I, I read. What is what? definition? Yeah. What? A person who owns something. <laughs> <laughs> and he owns the team. It, but there is, in America, there's historical context AKA, around it. Look, <laughs> other synonyms for it. Possessor, owner. <laughs> Proprietor, colonizer, homeowner, free freeholder, <laughs> landlord, uh, master, mistress, mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> keeper. You get re- worry back a couple. <laughs> master, Look, you start calling them keepers. The keeper, <laughs> my keeper. Master, mistresses. Oh. I think yeah, I think terminology can change. Mm-hmm. I'm not against it. Like I don't think this is one of those nitpicky things where folks are just trying mm-hmm. um, to stir something up. I do believe language is mean stuff, and I I do that. What Crystal West said, I think words mean things. Mm-hmm. And with the historical context of America, yeah, don't, don't you don't own shit, white men like just he didn't old, do it. They own old the team. white men own you don't own me, young black men as they run up and down the court and he cheer and chase. That had to be a part of slavery too. It was. I know. The race. Continue on. What Kanye told y'all? That ain't <laughs> Is Kanye retired. doing okay? You know he got a. Did you? I don't know if you seen the uh, interview with what's that guy on Netflix that had that show? My, uh, my I want to say my owner. My next guest don't uh, need uh, any inter- David Letterman. Yeah. Kanye's on there. Yeah, he got an interview. It's pretty interesting. Is he talking to Kanye? Mm, no, he's oh. he's kind of saying now. But he's talk, he, he talking about some interesting stuff. I want to, I want you to see it first before we talk about it. But I think one of the things that he talked about, and this is like way off topic, yeah. about like how mental health is, right? And how like if somebody sprained their leg, like you ain't going to do things to like make them like hurt it more, right? So if you sprain your leg, they ain't going to ask you to walk. But if you got like a mental health issue, they're going to do things to you that's, that's, that's going to help exacerbate like the issue that's already going on. Mm-hmm. So I was like, that was a whole interesting thing. Cause he's like, you know, I got a sprained brain. And I was like, what yeah. the hell he mean by that? Mm-hmm. But anyway, yeah, keep going. No, no I'm with it. I'm mm-hmm. just wanted to bring that to your attention. Y'all know what I mean. Nomenclature means things, right? Mm-hmm. I think it, it does. Yeah. And Niram said, it's okay. But I think it's some underlying issues, Right, like you know, I'm sure there's some decent air quote partners, owners, whatever they are, right, who do treat people like equivalently, and I do think it's probably some ones who do treat people like as if they the fucking owner, mm-hmm. right, and that's when the problem becomes. Right, yeah. right, right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, uh, what else you want to talk about? Um, I know we have a lot of voicemails to get through, so I want to make sure we have enough time to get through it. Um, let's talk about the chat. <laughs> Why do I keep calling it the chai? Because I drink you get chai, chai and, latte and matcha, dirty chai's daily, every daily. damn day. And I'm gonna go to the barista and be like, "Give me the chai." Give me the chai. The chai. The chai. Let's talk about that real quick. Let's unpack that before we start getting our shout out Friday. Okay. So let's look. Why we killers gonna be killers? Brandon. Killers gonna kill. Brandon is stupid, and I stand by it. <laughs> <laughs> I know a lot of y'all was trying to get me together. Oh, Brandon, Naomi been riding Brandon for so long. Now all of a sudden, 
I done wished the, the ill will on the character. You didn't will, wish ill will on the person and the, the character. Kid, I did not wish on the person. I <laughs> thought Jason Mitchell was an excellent actor. I still believe he's an excellent actor. Um, his behaviors are just unacceptable. Mm-hmm. But um, no, I'm talking about the character right now. I ain't talking about Jason Mitchell. I'm talking about Brandon. I don't even know this nigga last name. He is not rap. No, no, stupid. With an S, not a U, double O. S T O O P I D. Stupid. Stupid. Yeah. He just don't know. Right. Even so he finally figured out he was in bed with a killer. He finally right. realized the difference between the business that his woman was doing when we talking about blocks, right? Or I mean, it's still crooked, right? The councilman still is still correct, crooked, but right? Yeah, but no one's dying. Right. Mm-hmm. It's always better if you can just go to bed. Bro, do I. This nigga killing do white I, women in the middle of the uh, broad daylight in Chicago and ain't nobody seen ain't it. No, first of all, you're a lie. Everyone's seen it. <laughs> <laughs> and no one said anything. <laughs> True. <laughs> right? So I think that's what make it nervous. And I'm mad where, uh, who was he with? When they said, didn't we grow up in the same place? Who you talking about? My boy, Reggie. Mm-hmm. When he came, this Reggie, welcome to the family. Right. And he said, no, I ain't going to do this. I ain't know he was doing all this. I thought he was the entrepreneur. He said, didn't we both grow up? Because correct me if I'm wrong, Reggie and Brandon were like best friends when they were younger, right? Yeah, they was quite cool people. Him and he was and like, like the other dude that had died. Yeah, and it's like, so didn't we grow up on the same block in the same street? How you didn't even recognize that dude, I was a killer. A killer and a dealer. Well, with a name like Duda. We already know what it is. He either. Never mind. So, the, also with Brandon, again, another stupid S T O O P I D move when the um Latino cop tried to give him a heads up and he getting buck. No, Brandon, you should have been buck when you was trying to get these $50,000 for free. Mm-hmm. No interest, right? You should have been looking twice when you got the men um, policing your car. Right. Or, so he said, the police officer like, why are these men following your truck? Where did you get the money to do all these things? And uh, he said, I didn't even know they was following my truck. Right. I just got an investor. And, do that. And then also, Brandon, I peeped that too, where I was like, oh, so all these um, dough boys is paying their way. You know, on the block, the dough boys don't be paying their way, Mm-mm. right? Even if it ain't in like a disrespect, right? Even if it's uh, I ain't paying my way because I got your back. If anything pop off, type of thing. But I say he ain't rap tight at all. You know, mm-hmm. yeah. what you think? So yeah, that, that's more or less the thing too. Is that this nigga ain't no none of the the hood tactics, none of the hood benefits, none of this shit. It, this nigga was just like just under a rock. Under a fucking rock. Like, bruh, where have you been? And I and I get him. And like, what Red say, man, you know what? It's not that hard being a bad guy. But you- <laughs> he said it's not that, that hard, hard being, being a bad, bad guy. <laughs> you Somebody got to do it. So you might as well make some money with it. I was like, Rich, damn. Rich, I was like, well, Red, you do got a point. Because, you yeah. know, that's that's how it was proposed to me. That's how it, <laughs> That ain't how it worked. <laughs> Red still lost too. He got a little bit more street smart, but he still lost too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, cause Red's about to get bodied too. Can we talk like about it. how the killer going? What killers gonna kill? The killers are gonna kill because what they are, they kill killers. Us. So when the man done came to him and Reggie done did that, and the man said, "All I want is Reggie," and he said, "Well, he got he you got can a see he brother. got a little heart." Yeah, he got a little brother he take care of. And, and the, honest, the thing is, Reg is good at what he do, right? Like, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, he's, he's consistent. He's a good he pre- drug dealer. Right, he's <laughs> consistent. He's persistent. He keep them men in order, whatever he be doing, right? And I think he take a little pride in his work. All these things you should do at work. He's a good supervisor. Yes. He managed those those uh, killers and dealers very well. That's what I'm saying. And they listen to him. So, mm-hmm. like, I can see, like, even on both ends. And I also think the killer, I don't know, do the real name. See a little bit of himself. Mr. Perry. Yeah, I think Mr. Perry see a little bit of himself um, in Reggie, right? Because it also does say something about Reggie that he is taking care of his brother, mm-hmm. right? When, um, as y'all see, I think they alluded that Peaches was his younger brother's mother, basically is a crackhead. And he's like, mm-hmm. we don't sell the Peaches. And his bad story is with the hope that maybe eventually she'll get her shit together and take care mm-hmm. of him, right? Like that take a little fourth rock, right? Right, right? That tells me he ain't all the way a killer, right? right. Like, he, like he said, oh my God. Then he do things where he put out a cigarette butt in that boy head like he do shit <laughs> right but that's still not killing that's mm. bringing pain but that's the difference between bringing pain and killing right so you can see he got a little bit of i don't know a little bit of joy i don't know good left in him but you think dude go- i don't know i don't honestly i don't think dude are gonna kill reggie though i think dude are gonna kill that dude me too because that's what dude to do yeah i think because that's the thing he, he can't just let it sit no. i think dude yeah i think dude are gonna kill that dude and take over his crew yeah 
But that says something about his relationship with Reggie too. For yeah. him to do that. Yeah, and the thing is, like, especially what we you already know. That's his daddy. Maybe. You think that's his daddy? It might be. I think Duda is Reggie's daddy. Mm. Go for that it. would make sense. That made it a little bit harder. That's to true. kill your son. Yeah. And with all the shit you done son. fucked up on, right? Right. And not only that, like he air quote, you know how you, sometimes you men, especially you black men, all about building legacy and all that type of stuff. So he even seeing like, oh, he coming up and you just, yeah. like, could he step in eventually? Like, you know what I'm saying? I think he had all that in his head. Yeah. Damn, you made me forget about something. What you mean? No, I was about to say something, but. But I hope Reggie, well, I don't know, Reggie came down. We don't got no more leading characters. Well, that's the thing, right? <laughs> so since Jason Mitchell about to get killed off, what? Jason and uh, Jerrica about to get killed off. About to get got. And so what I'm thinking is, of, wait, yeah. did we discuss it on podcast or we just say that out loud when we was passing watching the show? Uh, I don't know, but yeah, we think they're gonna go ahead and get it. Jerrica and Brandon, they're gonna die together. Yeah. So how about this, y'all? Y'all send an email and let us know what y'all think. This is like with fan fiction. Let us know what y'all think. Who, how they gonna kill uh, them off? It's gonna be by drive by by Duda. Like, are they gonna break up and Jerrica gonna go somewhere and then Brandon gonna get killed? Like, what do y'all think? How y'all think they going to Yeah, oh, so that could this. be a thing. Like, Jerrica could go away because Brandon get, get, get got up, mm-hmm. right? And, you know, Jerrica coming on her um, her new life and time where she's just, like, serving the community and being yeah. a community advocate. But you can do that in a lot of places, right? You don't right. got to do that in that same block. I can imagine her going away and just doing that. And so I'm just curious. getting married now. So I'm just curious how it's going. So evidently the engagement will get broke off. And, like, like how else going from there, like, how it's going to be? Mm-hmm. That's more or less what I'm interested about. Like, yeah, what, how they're gonna type these loose ends, and then the thing is, like, so are they gonna bring in another character to like replace that, or are we gonna start focusing on a whole on, new, like, or a whole new? What about Common? Like, are we gonna focus on like Emmett? Are we focusing more no, on like Ronnie? Jesus, and, no. And Common, and we don't know nothing about Common having sex with Emmett's mama. Um, we might just bring in a whole new storyline. Yeah, or we gonna bring up like beef up this Duda in this investigation more like, and get more background on Duda right, stuff like, in his life. If Jason Mitchell gonna get killed off, this is good, what's gonna bring up the investigation, and then like they just gonna be all up in Duda ass and Duda gonna be killing niggas and shit. And I mean, if you're thinking about the stronger actors, you got Ronnie and mm-hmm. you got Duda, but Ronnie, I don't. It's, we only can take high functioning alcoholics so far. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I mean, agree. It's only so far we can take that, but Duda. And he got white teeth. <laughs> Duda is cute, honey. Why are you always Duda, talking about that you, man's teeth? Because, you know, Duda and Reggie, they relate. I think that's his son they brought. They cute. Reggie is fine and Duda is fine. What about Nero? You fine, too. Oh, okay. Just check. Brandon's stupid, though. <laughs> oh, my God. And Jerrica. So, Jerrica done tried to um, heal the peace and heal the world mm-hmm. and helping them people. Good for her. She finding a new calling. Oh, the privilege. You gonna talk about how sorry Ronnie is? You can take that one. Uh, why do you always leave me with Ronnie? You, you hate Ronnie so much. Because he be like, I'm trying. Oh, I, the, a lot. You always on the phone, Grandma. <laughs> I ain't even know what time it is. Thought you said five. five. What Ooh. time is it? Ten, nigga. That's what? not even your granddaughter. granddaughter. God, oh. Ronnie just wanted something to hold on to. He better hold on to his grandma. <laughs> he don't want to hold on to her ass. <laughs> his new woman. That shit. Well, she fucked that up. That ain't no woman no more. And cause she Emmett mama, so she she should be the smallest fuck nigga a mile away. Mm-hmm. I don't know why she was giving Ronnie that much play. So Ronnie was pushing to hold on to this baby, you know, bring the baby over, see great grandma. Yeah, and you it know, was try good. to it was build good. a relationship, trying to help old grandma girl got out. happy because you know, you know, sometimes yeah, you our know, you elders bring, can get in a certain bring age. Old Shirley, you bring uh, babies around old surly people. It bring the heart out of them. It does. Mm-hmm, I do. Well, babies bring up the heart. Babies and puppies do bring out the goodness of people. Mm-hmm. That's why, like Mabel, always bring the heart out of people, even though she <sighs> sometimes. Yeah. Anyways, uh, so she started coming over there, busting over. The mama came over there, busting over there, knocking on the door. Yeah, I called y'all, been blowing y'all up. Well, my grandma turned the ring off. My grandma, you gotta talk like him. My, my grandma, grandma see when she ring lay off. down. See, oh, that just that stupid talk. When she see when she lay down, she turned the ring off. So you nigga sharing one phone? Yes, <laughs> nigga ain't got no cell phone. What? He just got the he got the well, landline. Set the alarm clock. You got someone's child. I thought you said five. No, nigga. I said bring my baby back. In two hours. Jeez. 
I want to say you should have got grandma out the house, actually. Mm-hmm. Right? You should have run the baby to her. So, you know, she come over there. She knock up. And she said, just to give us space. Because it's him. I'll see y'all this weekend. No. She said, don't ever come, come back, back again. again. No. She said, give me some space. I come back this she weekend. She's going to need some diapers. So. Yeah. She's going to need some cash. <laughs> and then she am like, Ronnie. Granddaddy Ronnie. Mm-hmm. Guess who needs some diapers? But, like, Ronnie just. And I, she going to do, like, wasn't there a friend who had a kid? And they put the kid on the phone and be like, ask her if you can come over. Ask Auntie Nyambi if you yes. can come over. Yes, I have. And I said, <laughs> sure. <laughs> and I've said, sure. It's going to be the same. Ask Granddaddy Ronnie if you can come over. You remember that with the, they, they had the kids ask? Yes. You remember that? What yes. were you saying? Hang what up the, the fu- phone. You said, yes. hang up the phone. <laughs> the phone. <laughs> they don't know how to dial. They don't know their numbers. Right. Bring, ring. Hello? Uh, hello. Nyambi. Yeah, it was like, like they could barely say my name. B. Night. Night. I said, hello? Nine. Is this a killer? Who is this? Nine. <laughs> I'm like, who is this? Nine. Me. It's me. Let's call her Shaker. Shaker. <laughs> Shaker. Oh, hey, Shaker. I How said, you hey, doing? Baby. I said, you learned, I said you got a cell phone. Yeah. No, <laughs> well, what's going on? I said, what you doing? <laughs> come over. No, you can see like the, the mama was coaching the right. baby through the line. I said, if you can come over. Uh, come over? I miss no, it was like I miss you. I love you. Did I miss you? Miss you? you. This, oh my God. Love you? This, I say you can come, come over. Come over? Yeah, I say yeah. Come oh, over. you want me to come over there? No. No, you, your house. Your house. <laughs> I say you got Oh, you re- want to come to my house? Yeah. You got, yeah. A, you got a good vocabulary now. Yes. <laughs> well, I guess you can come over. I'm like, damn, now you're about you to go mean? chill. What t- <laughs> you didn't got duped into this shit. I think the baby stayed the whole weekend. Yeah. <laughs> No movie night that week. It was all in your spot. Did you yeah. have to sleep on the couch or the Yeah, I slept on the floor. <laughs> the damn baby was in my spot. Jesus, don't do that. I done got tricked like that with dogs, too. <laughs> How long did the other dog stay with us? <laughs> weeks. <laughs> had the damn dog for three weeks. It's like, when your mama coming <laughs> back? God damn. The dog started thinking that's where they live. Right. <laughs> <laughs> now we on a routine. Yeah, exactly. They look yeah. at what we gonna do next. All right, we getting distracted. But anyway, Ronnie, he's sorry. Mm-hmm. And the thing is, I know, I know, alcoholism is a disease, right? Like I'm trying to separate that out. Like he, he, Ronnie has never took the time to f- heal, right, mm-hmm. and go get treated, right, for this illness that he has. But I think what gets me is Ronnie know he got this. Mm-hmm. He's not one of the high functioning alcoholics. They'd be like, "Oh, I'm just just got to do something to take the edge off and go about my day and show up." Like Ronnie, he you started off with two are stumbling down the street. Vom- like he knows this is bad shit, and yet you keep going back. And what was all this driving, Ronnie doing? I ain't like that. He he started off in two nips and it tastes good. And he would have got a fifth it, the bottle. That's how it is. You go to Krispy Kreme. You You're like, said, you know what? One donut. Let me just get two donuts. Give me a Let me dozen two, in that bitch. Two original, and yeah. then you eat you eat one before you can get out the drive through, and you get to eat another one before you have the light. Next thing you know, you didn't hit a loop U turn. Give me a whole dozen. Give me a the dozen. The red in light this is bitch. on. God damn. <laughs> Give me a dozen, of them. but you know but, what? Baker's dozen. But not the thirteen. <laughs> so you can eat one on the way. <laughs> so you can eat another one on the way. But I did feel a little sorry for Emmett's mom because she really was kind of on the come up, right? Yeah. Sis was finding her another job. She got her apartment. Mm-hmm. Finally, Emmett doing somewhat this decent. I imagine she'd been raising this boy and his kids right. all their lives. Like, this is finally, sis finally can exhale literally, right. like she waiting can get to a exhale. Pain and everything right. Else. And, and the thing is, Ronnie, when he's sober, he is a good man, right? But he don't know how to keep those, those that shadow in line. And so I didn't feel sorry for him because he knows what's happening he's just choosing not to do it you know Mm -hmm. lazy and sorry shitting on yourself and sitting in it two different things but she was just i just love the arc that she was coming into and i wanted to dive a little bit more into her and i Mm -hmm. I did feel for her she beat the fuck out of ronnie with them flowers well yeah you don't know because he ain't in his right mind i don't know what he think he about to think about to pop off right now i wonder how many bouquets of flowers they had to go through one she got done on the first chain you think so yeah because as a woman it is an innate like someone come for you is on the pop i mean what was um our friend just telling us somebody first of all dominican republic what's going on all those people um passing away with fluid on their lungs is something going on but remember that what was that called a housekeeper Mm -hmm. came in like and helped the woman and oh, realized the, she was uh, alone. Yeah. And then gonna come back in the middle of the night, kind of break in her apartment, stand over her and be like, you know, you was all alone. I didn't want you to be lonely, so I'm here. And, and they she's butt naked. Yeah, and then what the woman say? <laughs> One of us is gonna die and I'm going back to the US. Kids, so you ready? 
So that's all when we always prepared at any moment to say, oh, it's me and you. We're going to mm. do this. What the hell is going on? We need to leave that for another topic. Well, what huh. the hell is going on over there in DR? The DR. Like, a lot of stuff. Fluid on the lungs, honey. And people just dying in their hotel rooms. This shit is crazy. Do y'all know a little teeter inside of that? Do we know any folks from DR? Is right. it something going on? Like, is it something in the water? Is it a mosquito bite? Is it something in the air? What is happening? Right. Mm-hmm. But it's a little bit too many folks coming up with that, like in perfectly healthy people. Yeah. Or I guess you could have got it from the plane too. It depends. Yeah, and I wanted and, to go to DR too. Yeah, I mean, we eventually get there. Um, but yeah, it's a lot of stuff. Well, I ain't going next month. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm not going next month. I might month. go to Cuba now. I mean, you know, our president. He's Can I go to, to Cuba? I don't know. He might have lifted that. Uh, I don't know. I think if you're going to go, you better hurry up and go. That's all I got to say. I think it's getting harder and harder. Um, what else are we going to talk about? Emmett on his come up. He got a job. Mm-hmm. Emmett finally made the right decision. Because I was like, oh, shit. Not only is Brandon about to get get it by Duda. Who else about to get it by Duda? Emmett. It, Brandon actually saved Emmett in that situation. Mm-hmm. Emmett made the right decision because he was almost about to be caught up in all the shit. Mm-hmm. Did you see? And you hear another one. His skin is way too delicate. <laughs> Supple. His 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 hands are way too soft to get caught up in do the game because mm-hmm. that ain't happening. So he saved it, right? I mean, even that, talking about that divine order when he set the whole chicken shack on fire, I was like, yeah, that owner gonna come back and kill him. And he was like, you know what? You did the right thing. He said because that insurance money. Okay, cause I mean, cause I'm a man. He old school, so he probably ain't never, ever, ever, ever filed an insurance claim, mm-hmm. right? So you know, when it's all cashed out, I'm sure he done bought that place back in the day, day right. right? So that stuff been paid over. He said so much so that I want to give you a paid salary. I want to give you a paid salary, open up a new place, right? Because I imagine, oh, he probably done had that since like the '70s, right? Right. So I'm sure it's paid in full. Everything paid in full. Ain't really shit too new, right? So I'm so if, with the gentrification, the market value of it now right. is probably. Three, four times mm-hmm. he about to be like the of what TikTok. he needs to even just do renovations, right? Because it's a chicken shop, right? Mm-hmm. So what you need new fryers and some marketing, but child, you don't need no more than 100000 to do right. that. And that's getting top of the line. Emerald Lagasse fryer. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm going be talking about get a couple deep fries. fries. <laughs> You'll be all right. I mean, what? You know, that's why you deep fry French fries. You only got a couple options, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm happy for Emmett and his signs of growth. Like, great, great. Emmett has glimmers. Where I'm like, okay, he's going to be okay long term. Mm. He's still growing and figuring out, but he's going to be okay long term. Neom, you want to take up with these babies and they just figured out they was poor. You know, it's a moment in every brown person's life. It's two moments. When they realize they black. Um, and then when also if you poor, when you realize you poor. Ooh. And sometimes you don't know. Uh, I don't think I knew moments I happen at the same time. And, so, <laughs> and you I, find I, out you black and poor. And the thing is, I didn't realize... I, I, I won't say pro, like working class or whatever. I didn't really that does not hit until you are interfaced with other. Because mm-hmm. I never was in a situation where I wanted or anything, right? So and mm-hmm. I think that's what we associated. But you look around, what did Papa say to them? They pulled up in a stage coat with Wi Fi <laughs> and snacks <laughs> and massage chairs. And he talking about how many Snickers bars y'all this sell? None. This is not what? what we didn't sell any Snicker bars. Fundraiser. Ain't nobody went no damn fundraiser. We don't play that shit. We here. just paid for this, nigga. Right. Broke nigga. And I think about that too, right? Think about when you was in DPS and had to go on field trips. And it'd be like subsidized to like ten dollars. And remember, they'd be very particular about like the meals you get, mm-hmm. or don't be, you know. Shout out to Greenfield Village. Like they have like, if you need a lunch, this is what you are gonna get. However, you can buy it, but you have to buy it. This mm-hmm. is the cost of it. Yeah. And I was like, I wonder how many teachers had to buy folks stuff because they still didn't like they didn't. Ooh. I could imagine, right? They just probably had to come with their credit card. So it was a couple times I, I found out I was poor. Yeah. I think the most memorable one. Is that when I was in high school? So you know, we were in DPS, uh, and every year, like before the season start, we like we play, we play some like a play another team, like a scrimmage game, yeah, like outside of the, the district, like just to like try some things out. This year, our coach made a deal with uh, a school in Muskegon. I think it was either oh, Muskegon God. Heights Ugh. or a school. Or Whenever you Muskegon. add heights to anything, just add so, another zero. We are in the. Um, center of Detroit on the east side of Detroit. We had to go to Muskegon. You already know Muskegon is like a three hour ride on the there, west, right? yeah, west coast of the state. So, like, you got to go from the thumb all the way to the other hand side of the hand for yeah. all the Michigan. Y'all went to them when they came to you. Oh, never mind. We, Y'all we went, went to, to them. them. Yeah, I already know that answer. We went to them. We rode three hours in yellow school Why buses. Y'all picked them? Oh my I God. don't know, yeah, but they we probably went sponsored there. Y'all. And yellow school buses, so you know how <gasps> uncomfortable that was Ooh. getting in that three and a half hour ride. Yeah. Um, 
I know I y'all took, was hungry. We took a stop at Outback, one of your favorites. Y'all we ate, ate at Outback. We ate That's at Outback. That's fancy. Um, did y'all pay for that. it? Yeah, we had to pay for it. Uh huh. How that go? How did that bill go? Y'all, separate bills. Everybody. Every, how many of it was at least forty? How that work? <laughs> separate bills. Did the everybody. Outback person hate y'all? Yes. Oh my. God. It was multiple people on it on that on that one. Gotcha. So drive to Muskegon. And, like, this is when I knew. So, you get to the school, you see the football field. <laughs> it's like a fucking stadium. I mean, that's where you play football. It, no. You just pour. Y'all just play out in the yard. You know. <laughs> N- po niggas play out in the yard you know in the street. The, we, the... we got bleachers. <laughs> we, you know, we just got regular bleachers. <laughs> no, baby. It was a fucking stadium. <laughs> they had a locker room like, like the Detroit Maybe Lions. You're supposed to have a locker room. No. Like... We had a locker room with like lockers. Looking like and the shit. scene from Carrie. Shout yeah. out to the old heads. We the had original lockers Carrie. Like, this looked like lockers, right? With just cement. With These cement niggas bricks. had a locker room like the uh, like Ford Field. Oh so you got like the open wood and you sit yeah. down and like shit just hang there. What did y'all say when y'all walked in there? Like, what the fuck? Because y'all would have to go in the girls' locker room or did they have a no, guest? No, they had a guest locker room for the football. Because that's team. when you're poor at the school. You just got to go with whatever go the, the girls' gender. locker room. Yeah. 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 These niggas had a guest locker room. So we like, what the fuck? And like Was y'all using their soap? Yes. <laughs> so I remember the coach being like, Don't let these like you we out here, don't let these white boys fool you. They saw, you know what I'm saying? Y'all, Those y'all niggas from Detroit. White boys. Be careful. Y'all niggas from Detroit, like y'all gonna go out there and whip their ass. And you know, we getting all yeah. hyped and shit. Yeah. And I remember I was on a uh, kickoff return. Yeah. And I was uh, one of the lead guys. So they won the coin toss, they decided to kick first. So we can receive, and like they had this whole routine with the uh, with the crowd and shit. So y'all niggas so were like AD, the kicker was like distracted. doing some shit, and it's like ha ah, ha, ah, and it's like oh, ah, you know they be making them boys. It, it scared like, y'all, and it was like boom when he kicked the ball. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Did everybody on the field, all the black people duck? Did y'all shake? Yeah. Like, and that's the thing. It's a stadium. So it shakes. So, so it's like, it's like, like a cannon. shaking. Yeah. And like, it was no cannon. It was like, and we kicked the ball. It was like, boom. And like, everybody, I said, like, what the fuck? You done and missed the ball. You had one point, job. You had like, one I job. Like, I already knew. Like, we was poor. You lost. But at that point, when that ball got kicked, and I was so distracted from that, when the, the other football player came and hit, hit me. me. <laughs> Did you just? I would have just laid on the ground and looked at this guy. Dear, what cat was? Dear Heavenly Father, this is I your was, humble servant, Nearum. I was just so outdone. <laughs> y'all coach it up a fair job, and we got our ass whooped. Did y'all have y'all ain't take at least one extra school bus of people? No, because when we had to travel like that, like we would have at least one bus of like people from like and no. you signed up for it and it's like a um, mm-hmm. raffle and you would go and cheer on the people no so y'all like, wouldn't feel alone people have to drive up there themselves oh that's trash so no. it was like a couple we parents. went as poor as y'all you know i didn't i didn't go to high school in dps so, mm-hmm. so i got a little bit little not not that much just so a it, was, little bit. it was a couple parents that came out and it, like like i they, said and they was looking sad on the home okay. team side was a stadium on our side with the parents with in the, the matching side, gear it was just like one bleacher I was like, what? It was one mama looking like they in trouble. <laughs> what would be over? You're in danger, girl. You're in tra- and it's like, they whooped our ass. That, and that, then oh, they had... like, whooped your ass. How bad? Bad. Like mercy. Whooped Almost. our ass bad. And what the coach say? Look at these sorry niggas. And that's why I said, don't white boys be corn fed, fed, fed out there, though. Don't sleep on them. So that's the most memorable time where I knew I was poor. Because we came off there. Y'all was you discouraged. Know, our, you know, these niggas got jerseys with their names on the back Y'all of it. Oh no, you wouldn't. No, and DPS, hell no. Y'all just got the one from two years ago. Yeah, we got the shit that's uh, four years old. Oh. You got to return it, it back at the end matching. of the season. Like I remember when I got my jersey, it was still duct tape on it. Like, did y'all niggas wash these? No, nah, not with duct tape. Because it was like duct tape on it. Because like, you know, because they so big or wide at the bottom, like people like fold it up and like duct tape yeah. the bottom of it. Yeah. <sighs> These niggas had names on the back of their jerseys. And I was like, we are out done. <laughs> we fucking What the bored. coach do? Did y'all ever go back out there with them? No. Nah. <laughs> I'm still with you when they talk about Because I know exactly. Because they do it at colleges. Like, white people get this yeah. stuff. It's almost like when white boys be like, woo. Yeah. Like, it is something. They get in sync, in unison. They get in formation, honey. Yeah, they and they, they will make a whole stadium fucking shake. Don't let them get them keys out. When white people start shaking keys in stadiums and start bringing um, what's little add-ons, newspapers mm. and shit, they got something coming for you. 
They got something coming for you. So they whooped our ass. It's so okay, Nero. That was one time. Like that's the most memorable one. But like I had a similar experience like they did when they went to the aquarium. Yeah. We wasn't at the aquarium. We went to Cedar Point. And same again did on you the have yellow to save, school bus. Did you have to save your money? We had to save money. Or fundraise, I should say. We had to no, we had so sell candy. So fundraise. We sold the caramel popcorn. Remember the popcorn with the yeah. nuts in it? Mm-hmm. We sold that too. We also sold like some other stuff. Remember the year. coupon books? Yes. Oh my god, them stupid coupon books. Whoever, whoever did they become a millionaire off I that shit? I don't know. It was some and they was always trash coupons. Yeah. Two dollars off for, a car wash. Except for the Pizza Hut ones. I think the Pizza Hut ones was good. <laughs> Have I vaguely remember? Because it was like get a free pizza or some shit like yeah, that. Yeah, that was worth it. Or like free pizza when you buy a soda or some bullshit like but that. But every other coupon in that book, and I remember my parents and my family would buy it for me every year, and it would just collect dust, yes, and it, it would, would just, just pile up year after year. Because it was useless. We were so poor. I remember then, we had a reading program that after you read a book, you could take it to Little Caesar and get a personal. Little Caesars did. They did. Okay, they looked out. I remember taking my poor ass little Caesar, but I read or no Pizza Hut with the personal pants. Mm. Okay, sorry, poor poor stories. And so the other one was like we went to Cedar Point. So Cedar Point is like a uh, amusement park for those who like never six been. Flags. There. So it's like a Six Flags Bush or whatever, Gardens. but Bush Gardens, but it's a smaller and it's like known in the Midwest. Yes, yeah, in Ohio. So yeah, the same thing. It's like you know our sister city, our sister school is coming. Blah blah blah. Uh, you know. We're going to meet there and, like, split up things. Yeah. So, like, the same thing they did to them. And, like, we get there. We rode from Detroit to Cedar Point, which is, like, a two-and-a-half-hour drive. Yeah. In a fucking yellow school bus again. Oh. We pull up. We sit down. Yeah, we pull up. We sit down. They in a the fucking motor coach. <laughs> with vibrating what, what, um I would say with hydraulics. Right. When the coach arrived, did it get the hydraulics and come down for you? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Walk, you know, instead of Wi-Fi, because we didn't have Wi-Fi then. Everybody had a Walkman. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, I, that's when iPads came out. When, I mean, not iPads. Um, what's the music one? iTunes? What are those called? What? What is the where you play? You used to play the music on the MP3s. What oh, were they called? iPods. I, iPods. Yeah, yeah, everybody had iPods. No, not no, not what I'm talking. No, about. I'm talking about the white people. Yeah. Is it called iPad? Oh, no, iPads is the big one. iPods. Yeah, iPods. Is iPods nonchalant? Is that not a thing no more? Because mm, I guess your phone. Easy. Yeah, I guess so. Uh, and it was the same thing. Like, what the fuck? Uh, well, I know. I, I did. I have similar stories to that to you. But I, I thought that was just something to see. And it was so, like, what broke my heart a little bit was Reggie... Um, brother i always forget his name was like i ain't never yeah. been out the city or like kevin that's how you know that's the piece where environment versus nurture right because mm-hmm. he was like oh my goodness they were at the shed aquarium which is you know it's downtown off the river he was like is this the ocean <laughs> like, nigga, and Pasha no. papa said oh boy don't know the difference <laughs> between the river and the ocean but even the other guy you know the brown darker skinned little boy who's a little smarter he was mm-hmm. like no this is you know michigan da, 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 and all that. i mean uh, it's a lake not a river mm-hmm. right so it's just saying multiple things where I've never been outside of my city. And I think that is a, that speaks true. Like there's a lot of these young people who've never left their city before. Right. And when I mean city, I don't even mean like Chicago proper. I mean like their block. I know some people right. who you know, ain't 10 left block past radius. eight mile. Right? And, that's, and to be so young and to be restricted. And also what was refreshing, right, was uh, for a change, the white kids weren't white. And the mm. colonizers weren't colonizing, right? Right. Where they could have, right? Don't get me wrong, I'm sure it's some, but it looks like the ones they paired with had a little good sense, mm-hmm. right? And were really engaging with people and having conversations. I was worried when I seen that boy dancing and shucking the jive, and I don't like to do I don't like dance in front of white people like that. Like I don't like to I don't like when black people dance in circles and white people are around them. It Miami makes me don't like black people to do anything around white people. Don't breathe. No, no, I don't say that. But you know what I'm talking about. You know how you'll be doing the dance and white people circle around you? Don't mm-hmm. do that. No, no, no. You ain't gonna look at me. Like, if we gonna dance together, Cool, but don't just circle. This ain't no show, honey. This is no, none of that. But I think it was done in a very, like, I don't know, genuine way where they then followed up. They're like, you need to come to my party. Mm-hmm. Right? But I don't know. Maybe next week they're going to tease his ass. I don't know. They're going to say, thought, dance. Dance oh, like you did. Oh, yeah. Dance, boy. Exactly. Right? Instead of them saying, teach me, right? Like, I can digest that scene. I think that's the one he needs for them to be like, can you teach me? Like, I can breathe that, but not when they just saying dance and shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what reminded me of that master shit. Dance. Come make me happy. No, I can't do it. But you even seen the sad part when he went to Reg and was like, can I go here? And he talking about, did you sell them two ounces? He said, no. Well, you know the answer. That's it. 
you had a moment. And then when they gonna put it in the other boy backpack, mm -hmm. stupid. And then who was the um black tether version? <laughs> of, what's his name? His name Kevin. I think his name was Kevin. Let me check and see. Yeah, the black tether version of Kevin. Y'all know I'm talking about one who the father died, and who, um, who's the smart air quote the smarter one who needs who the teacher recommended mm -hmm. him go to the um private school. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like when that young black boy, he was like, what up, though? He was like, good evening. Good evening. I said, is this the us? <laughs> is it this the tethered version of him? But what I did appreciate was the breath of fresh air that came once he came, right? Like, even mm. that black boy at the private school, like, he let his guard down. And he told him the real. He was like, you know, those teachers is real cool. I learn a lot. Like, I really like learning. I do like school. He said, you know, sometimes it can be lonely, right? Because the white people going to do white people things. He said, but if you come, we can be friends. Mm -hmm. I said, this is me. Mm, you're like, oh. I can process that. And even how they just from the same place. So I do hope that, um, I think his real name is Albert, I know. Mm -hmm. But I, 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 Alex. But I hope whatever. Yeah, his name is Kevin. His name is Kevin. I hope Kevin do decide to go to that school, right? Because he he's naturally gifted, right? All the kids are, like, smart. Like, everyone has it. But it looks like Kevin's naturally. Um, you know, some folks yeah. can just look at stuff. He was in Black Panther? And they can get it. Yeah. He was a little baby. Not, he wasn't a baby. But he was one of the babies. Oh. Yeah. Interesting. He got anything? He's 14. Yeah. Oh, I don't know why I thought he was like 12. He a little petite. Nope. Anything <laughs> else now? No, uh, it was a good episode. It was a decent episode. It was a little easier than watching the other one, but I'm still a little upset. It still is hard. Just to be honest. Yeah. Just to be honest. All right, what time is it? It's shout out Friday. Yeah. It's shout out Friday. Absolutely. Shout out, shout out, shout out, shout out right. Friday. Am I going first? Yeah. All right, so this is from Apple Podcasts. It says, second review by March 251. And it says, I left a review last summer, but wanted to leave another one because I have to say that this is my number one podcast. This is really the only podcast I'm hooked on. I love the authenticity and transparency, the intellect and blackness, the ratchetness, the advice, and the love. Thank you so much. We appreciate y'all. Thank mm -hmm. y'all for hanging in there from year to year too, right? Because yeah. that's the thing with the podcast. Like, how do you still keep it authentic and still spicy without... Mm -hmm trying too much right because you know sometimes when you be doing too much it, it goes from there am i reading that's one here no, i can read it all right uh it says still don't know how to change my screen name oh and it's okay. parentheses is from uh <laughs> to nigel yeah and it says uh still don't know how to change my screen name that's, that's look how many episodes <laughs> y'all have while wow, y'all are doing great oh my goodness thank you we really appreciate it, it. Next, we got an um, email from um t Edmund. the subject says hey y'all please um share info on the show or um what's that oh social, social media, media. oh i'm old it says hey um I, why everybody break it down <laughs> toy nia did i do it right near yeah toy nia toy nia that's, that's, that, that's really pretty um edmund uh, again i'm originally reached out a few podcast i originally reached out um to a few podcasts um that i listen to because i need help raising money for an event that i want to throw for a fellow survivor of domestic violence I'm glad to say that my original goal was to have $300 for the event, and I raised 500 in less oh, than two shit. weeks. Y'all, Rod from the black guy who tips gave me $255 out of his own pocket. Shout out to Rod. The support that I've gotten has truly humbled me. I told myself when I was asked to host an event that if God really wanted me to do this, he, he, should, he would provide, um, and he is showing out. I also have several resume writers and a master barber who has volunteered their services for these ladies. After leaving my abusive marriage in 2017, I moved to Atlanta, Georgia. I attended many events, panels. They all share information on signs and types of, of abuse resources, and they tell you to leave. No one tells you what happens after you leave. Mm. I just want to fill in the gap for sisters who have left but um, need a little encouragement along the way. I have reached out to several batter women's shelters throughout the greater Atlanta area and I'm hoping to um, host 30 la ladies everything is free child care light refreshments raffles door prizes etc the link to register is via Eventbrite below we'll be sure to put this on social media for y'all too and the name of it is healing is a bra the healing is a vision board party like I said it's a free event y'all it's on um Eventbrite, and we're going to link it through our social media um, on Friday so y'all can go. And if y'all know anybody in the greater Atlanta area that could benefit from mm -hmm. this, it's completely free. If you listening to it and you're going through something and you're thinking maybe you need to do this, sign up. Like, please. Market calendars is August 24th. 
I'm from 4 to 6 p.m. Yeah, 4 to 6 p.m. I'm trying to see where it's at. It looks like it's at the East Atlanta Kids Cup. So, again, we'll post this on social media so y'all can attend. But it, this is what you need to do. Right. right? Like if you is- know somebody, if it's you, pass it on. Like, let's get the word out. And then, sis, I, I have a feeling, um, Toy Nia, that this this is your calling in your ministry. And this is going to be the first of many. Right. So, once you fundraising to do your second one let us know so we can help support okay right all righty let me read our next one here yeah so we got one from shalanda what's up what up girl yeah Uh, and it says lean on me (laughs) hey narrow to nyambi it's me shalanda i was so hyped when nyambi played that bathroom scene uh, from (laughs) lean on me because that's my favorite part of the movie so some of the kids don't know about Lean On Me. It's a classic. She said, I sang yeah. the fuck He's out not. of that school song <laughs> while stuck in traffic on uh, on I-95 trying to get to D.C. <laughs> oh my God. on this good Friday morning. Uh-uh. You would have <laughs> Not did five years. You would have thought I did five not years at year. Eastside Not a super senior. And finally graduated as the Mr. Clark <laughs> And purgated me. <laughs> <laughs> you are as purgated. Say what? I would have been like, you know, I read, I'm verse. I don't think I've seen that, or maybe I haven't. Maybe I've read it, uh-huh. but I haven't seen it. Yeah, it says, know, saying it. with all my soul, like I've been there, uh, been through the struggle. It's just something about that song uh, that you can't help but hit each harmony in every harmony like how did the writers room go when they were like i think this would be a good time while they're in the bathroom getting cussed out to do a quick um little harmony mm-hmm. quick voice demand what y'all think <laughs> <laughs> he said i think they went on the breakfast club a few years a few years ago to sing that song <gasps> what uh, thanks for giving me a good laugh and starting my weekend love you guys talk to you soon peace and blessings Solanda. oh my <laughs> goodness i love it all righty you ready to get into some voicemails now y'all we got a lot of voicemails this is what we're leaving space for so we can give everybody all this stuff and some of y'all are hilarious on these voicemails so right. let's go ahead and play them all right first one from uh brie let's see if we get this hey, going y'all, what's hey. going on hey brie it's been a long time before i, I met you no i'm just kidding step two step two step two step two step two hi mom hey. hi dad it's brie y'all what's cracking hey um, where you been I've been gone for a little bit, you know. Oh. I've been locked up in my house praying. Ain't no wrong with that. You all right? Deep prayer yes. with the ancestors. Yes. <sighs> to fight off the crafties Ooh. at my job. Oh, Jesus Lord. Christ. Yeah. But they told me that I could uh, take a break. <laughs> what? What's the break? <laughs> to come and talk to y'all. Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> I said, from what? Wait, we gotta get So I'm just here to like chime in really quickly and then I'm gonna get back into my deep prayer, okay? Gotcha. Cause okay. Cause I'm fighting off a storm here, okay? Okay. But um, I've been listening. I've been keeping up. And I just wanted to chime in on a couple of conversations y'all y'all been having. Mm-hmm. Um, I just wanted to share that I, too, was bamboozled by the Ari Lennox concert, okay? Because <laughs> she posted sold those out. dates, honey, on yeah. a Thursday night. And it was sold out. And Friday, Friday morning, morning <laughs> at 8 a.m. I went on there and they hadn't gone. been Nothing. released yet. <laughs> I said, okay, let me get my coffee. Yeah. They said 10 a.m. I said, I'm heading to work. Yeah. And when I got there to go purchase my tickets, they were gone. They were sold out in seconds and seconds. They were gone, okay? And then she got on live, and I chimed in and was like, please add another show. Please add another Los Angeles show. And she going to tell me. She literally responded and was yeah. like, I already added another show. Dang, what you want me to do? Move to LA? Yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I yeah. need this. Yes. That would help. I need okay. this piece. Okay, Ari, yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Damn. But just a quick plug if you guys love Ari or are just now getting into Ari, yeah. you might want to check out Masego, Smino, No Name, Saba. Dang They're man. all really good friends and they are all they genius as fuck. They are shit slaps. I love Masego a little better than Anderson Pack, but you know that's how he's going. Well, let me check Honestly. out Masego. I can't spell um, his name. How do you spell Masego? And then like mm-hmm. the Uno conversation, I wanted to chime in to as well. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you guys saw the Black Twitter feed where like Hilarious. Uno called themselves <laughs> chiming in about like what the real rules were, Hilarious. talking about like you can't stack cards yeah. and you're only supposed to pull one from the deck if you don't have a card to play. Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> who the fuck Uno think they are? Like yeah. the inventor of the game. Like, <laughs> What? Clearly, they've never played and had fucking fun, okay? Because yeah. that ain't how you play it, Chief. <laughs> that ain't it, Chief. <laughs> That's not it, okay? Um, <clears throat> and just to make an announcement to everyone listening, 
I am looking for a Morehouse class of 19 man. So <laughs> everybody, if you see him, point him out. Okay, we had some I'm looking for him. For I'm house. looking I said, for your him. school. Woo! All right, this conversation y'all been having about the birds and the bees have been like snatching my wig off, and I'm wearing a natural. So <laughs> it's like I'm, I'm, woo! I'm really thrown. Okay, because the household I grew up in, it was just flat line. Don't do that shit. <laughs> and that was it. <laughs> I didn't do that shit. Okay. Not until I was 21. Okay. And I'm 26 and still can't even tell you what the shit was. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I'm just. It's something yeah. to that, right? Because it don't have to be necessarily that, a negative experience. Would have benefited yeah. from a conversation. Yeah, just a <laughs> something, just right? some yeah. tips and tricks. It's crazy. And then I got like introduced into porn yeah. like after the fact for like. Yeah. Educational purposes, quote mm-hmm. unquote. <laughs> Who's looking at learning. Jada Fire? Y'all stop learning from these okay, I'm gonna leave that right there and just say oh, I pinky. definitely would have benefited oh from a conversation. Just a conversation at some point. Just some time. reality, right? <laughs> how, how does strategic place? All goes. right, I'm gonna go back to praying, okay? Because right. these crafties is getting stronger by the day, and <laughs> you can't let down. You the can't. witchcraft is real. Yep. I need to. Mm-mm. Okay, I'll talk to y'all soon. Bye. All right. You can't. First of all, I like this prayer. I like going into this, this deep prayer with the ancestors. And I think I'm about to head into that mode too in a minute. When people are like, what you doing? I'm like, I'm in um, deep prayer with the ancestors. Um, but it is something to the sex conversation, y'all. Especially when you get to a certain, like, I do think, like, I think my stance is that you have to talk with your kids or folks in your life from a very young age on up. But I think as they mature each year, you give a little bit more insight. And something does happen when your kids reach a certain age where you should give some I mean, I don't know if tips and tricks the right way, but right. you shouldn't be giving them like tips on how to hold the penis. No, but how I think maybe this is more selfish from a woman's perspective, right? Because sets can can be painful if not done um correctly, mm-hmm. right? And if you do it in a way that's not pleasurable, so many times, right? You get this negative association. I do think it's our duties as aunts and moms to say, "Hey, sis, you know, if you're going to do this, be moisturized, right? You know, mm-hmm. that that type of stuff that I think would be beneficial. Now, if right. you figure out if you like it from the back, flipped up, uh, you play with that. But I think it is something about sharing with folks like the basics and comfortability when it comes to that. But maybe I'm too, you know, I'm too. I'm a Old millennium. So mm-hmm. maybe look, the folks before generation is like, nah, you ain't with us, honey. I'm one with the millennials on that one. You can't tell your kids that. I mean, I don't know what would be equivalent to tell a tell your your a son about pleasurable, right? Mm-hmm. Like, what would you okay. make sure is what Same anything? Thing. Look, no matter what you're doing, <laughs> you don't want none of that. Nothing. Friction. You don't want no dryness. You like it should not, not be no penis dry. From telling you that, you don't, no penis. No one needs to be dry. Okay. Cocoa, and, cocoa. Yeah. Condoms for every penis. Yeah, condoms for every penis. I don't care how many penises in the room. I don't care who with who. But for every penis in the room, there mm-hmm. needs to be a condom. I agree. Or de- a penis like. Penis like. Well. Yeah, you said like as well. What do you say? Penis like. Yeah. Any penis like <laughs> penises in the room <laughs> to have a condom. That's going to insert an uh, orifice or get in, go somewhere that's dark and clammy. Right. Okay. Come on. Banana. It, <laughs> cucumber. Cucumber. Come on, rabbit. All of that. All that and clean, yeah, cleaned and kind yeah. Of, yeah. Okay. All right, let's get to Our it. Poor children. Oh, I also meant to say with my check in, yeah. So I went to Yo, therapy, check-in. yeah. Oh, so I went to therapy <laughs> thinking I'm about to go and let my soul open up, and I went on a damn wrong day. My therapy and session until next week. Oh, I gotta get to there. I gotta because get there. That's I was like, it. you know, I need to go ahead and get the therapy. I said, I got a lot of things to talk about, I need to got some shit to get off my fucking chest. <laughs> Get there and the door lock is dark and shit. Look, now you about to get attitude. Yeah, right? like I'm calling her. Where the fuck you at? And she thinking something wrong with right. you. Right. She sending you a text. Call nine one one. And then the thing is, like, I, I finally go look at the schedule on the email because I usually get like uh, email reminders. Yeah. So I'm like, well, I didn't get one. Yeah. So she got like this website. I checked the appointment. So it's not until next week. And then as soon as I get in the car and driveway, uh, I get this uh, unknown number. It was unknown. It was like blocked. Yeah, you know them. Therapists be particular. If they don't got their hitter and they got to call you back, they block you. They, they like lawyers. Blocked. They're not calling and you. And I was like, I bet this is a thor- uh, the uh, therapist call. Yeah. Hey, now I'm just checking She in said just you. checking to see if you need, what's it called? 8110? Right. What's it called? 5150. 50, y'all know what the 5150 is? <laughs> okay, go ahead. I was like, I, I, I'm just here and I thought it was the appointment. It's like, no, you know, I'm out of town, blah, blah, blah. It's like, yeah, I got it. 
Is, is Did, there anything? I told you she checked back. You sure? Is there anything? We can have a quick phone no. conversation. It's like, no. No, I'm good. I'm about to get a Krispy Kreme. <laughs> right. Don't know what it's <laughs> the Krispy Kreme light is on. I'll holler at you later. <laughs> All right, let's get into this voicemails. Let's hold on. Hello? Yes, waiting. Oh. Hey, near Miami. This is Red Baron. Red Baron, what's up, man? Calling about when they see us. Oh, shit. Um, I know you guys were talking about it. Shit. And Oh, there was a lot going on in that movie. Um, when I first started watching it, I was definitely paying attention to the language. I was really keying into how they were talking about us yep. in that time, what the attitude was, just, you know, the whole entire mm-hmm environment of things um also you know i had seen some of the interviews beforehand and you know just you know touching up on some of the things that you guys have already talked about that that in that time you really see just how really dangerous it was to be black in new york and in that time and that you really had a sense of you couldn't mind your own you couldn't mind your own business for anything because right, right. you were you were always in danger and you know even at that you know through you know through this four part series you really saw just how much of a reality that that was and you could see the continued hate that was really projected towards black people in general and kind of really keying into um antron and and his dad mm-hmm. mm, i agree hold up we got some more yeah mm-hmm. just keep going go Okay, this is Red Bear and I'm back. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. you, so speaking on Antron and his and his dad, because there's just so yeah. much of that that you kind of just really feel hits, you know, hits at home and just hearing a lot of testimonial coming yeah. from near him on that, that the reality for black men in that situation that you know, there there was from the perspective that I saw it. Mm-hmm. I could understand and see why Antron's father had a lot of fear. Yeah, because here's a police officer getting ready to yep. take the livelihood of your family away from you yep. if you don't comply. Oof. And. You could see, you know, the very struggle of that entire nature and and what's hard, even hearing interviews after that, was that there was really no peace between Antron and his father because, yeah. unfortunately, Antron got really, you know, he just got really jammed up. Yeah, mm-hmm. I agree. And... You know, it's it's just hard to feel one or two ways about that uh, because, you know, at times you, I'm like, you definitely feel for both sides and, you know, and there's really, really no winning in that. And so it was just one of those things to where just seeing that whole entire experience for me, just made me really super mad. Yeah, it pissed me the fuck off. I told you I wanted to yeah. throw a uh, more control at the TV. Yeah, exactly. You got some more. Okay, keep going, Daniel. Oh, okay, I'm back. I'm like, there's there's just so much to talk about on this. So I'm gonna try and I'm gonna try and wrap it up as best as I can. No, man, this, do you do what you got to do? In this call, you know, throughout throughout the movie, I was I was mad and I was actually crying, and I feel like I was just between those motions of anger and sorrow because when you look at that situation at any time it can 
always be you. And now in this climate where we're at to where at times they're not even trying to incarcerate us, they're just trying to kill us. Yeah. Yep, that's different. And it makes you really look and examine the fact that it it comes with these laws Mm -hmm. and I know that, you know, we talk, there's a lot of talk about voting and everything, but it's really about getting these laws that keep black mm-hmm. and brown people incarcerated mm-hmm. yep. completely off the books. Exactly. You know, they have to disappear yeah. to where you can't have these mandatory minimum mm-hmm. sentences that just absolutely take away your life with right. no possibility of recuperation let alone let alone restitution but you know to that fact when you really look at everything that happens is that we really need laws in place to where if people in authority don't do better jobs at doing what they're doing they have to be held accountable yeah Mm -hmm. true people have to be fired Mm-hmm. People got to do, you know. People have to do time. There has to, has to be accountability. You just see this. No, one more. You got one more for him. Okay, I tried. I couldn't do it. This is right there. <laughs> um, you really see that in the context of everything that's going on, that these laws really matter, and that these laws that are in place and that have just been kept in place because they're you know, you just see that if you're only voting for, you know, for major elections and not locals, and if you're not getting laws and things change, then that really affects how you're judged in these systems. And, you know, you know, just, you know, just seeing that movie, I, you know, I'm glad that, um, that Linda is catching all that heat that she is and she's getting flamed and she deserves right so so much more where she deserves to be destitute and facing criminal charges mm-hmm. herself see this is where cancer but, culture like comes into play right you know this is the, yeah this is to look at this deserve, yeah. can we look at the situation as a whole yeah. it's really about laws that need to change and we need, and the laws that are coming down against black and brown people, they have to disappear. Yeah. You know, they, they cannot still be in place to where they are there to terrorize strictly black and brown people in society. Because, you know, white collar crimes and, you know, in things like, in things like this, and even crimes that white people do, they're never on the same level as it is towards black and brown people. So it was a really, really eye opening experience seeing when we see us and wow. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing. Y'all know, y'all know this is our space and community. You can come say as much as you want, take as much space as you need. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Alrighty. Next one. Be that delight. What the hell? Y'all are some creative people. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know who this is? If I had to guess, this is probably Dan. <laughs> he always start off with some type of music. All right. Yeah. This is a little, little messy. <laughs> Calling on behalf of a woke ass Tam and, of course, me, Messy. She let me out the, the spot because... Uh, she wanted me to answer this nigga riddle for uh, Nam being near him. Thank no you. Because truth. niggas is giving the me a such a hard time. The problem with the nigga riddle, it no riddle it's simple. Two women, one man. The man tells him, I love you. And you're the only one. Nobody else. The other one, I love you, but there's another. If uh, we remember correctly, this is how all young boys become men when they find that loved one in their life. Mm-hmm. The loved one is simple. 
he tells this new woman who he's about to marry, I love you and no one else. Mm -hmm. And so he tells his mama, you always be loved. But there is another. What? And that's why most moms <laughs> always have a problem sometimes with their mother-in-law. See, there is an and, answer you know, to this nigga riddle. It's always a constant battle, you know. No. Who's cooking better? What? Your wife or your mom? <laughs> so it's yep. always going to be that. Now I'm the only one cooking collard greens. So it's not really Sometimes true. you do gotcha. get a chance. I got you. But that's the answer to the riddle. So what is this mom? The one who says, I love you, but there's somebody else. I that's the mom. Oh. So there's the nigga riddle for you. <laughs> <laughs> you nigga, see you nigga dissertation. And when it comes to Nero, man, come out. Hang out. Get out. <laughs> my nigga Nessie you niggas is a lie Nessie then came in for the save no. cause niggas was coming near him that ain't no, no damn riddle. riddle that ain't no real riddle you didn't ask this who nigga, the women were I didn't have to I said who you who loved the most oh my god what's the answer again <laughs> the second woman that he said uh, there's somebody else that's his mama <laughs> And he told the first woman, there's nobody. It's his, it's his, Where did you, do you write these? Is that a book, Nigga Riddle? It I don't should even be. know if they'll let that put that through. <laughs> that should Society be. is too woke. Nigga Riddles. <laughs> the first woman is this lady that he's about to marry. And the second one is his mama. Next call. He came back with another Oh, Lord. Man. He Let's got another that. nigga riddle. Yeah. Now that uh, well, Tam is looking at me in my eyes. Oh, <laughs> shit. Um, what she wanted me to tell you is, yeah. when it comes to us being angry, yeah. we shouldn't be as angry as we should. Mm. You know, when we look at, uh, if you look at something like Roots, you know. Which I watch Kuka, every Christmas. He didn't really suppress his anger. Mm -hmm. He put it to something else to let his children to know. Because one day, he was able to get his revenge. Mm. That's the thing that we need to start doing. We need a plot for the long term when it comes to us being uh, woke black people. Mm -hmm. Beyonce say, don't get mad. That's all I want to say. That's true. That's true. We need to be and reminded. I'm riding near him so much. Nambi. I got to stay on. Hey, he's doing the best he can. I'll be trying. Don't let him out. I got to stay on. Let him out. No. All right. That's it. Have a good one. She riding me like a fucking $2 hoe. Uh, uh. What? <laughs> be careful. Come on. All right, next voicemail. Y'all got some good ones this week. It's bring me joy. Nigga Yo, race. Black Love Matters family. What up, though? Nirm and I on What up? Jeff, uh, Jeff, what's up, man? Oh, niggas out of breath. Bear with me. <laughs> got the gym. Ooh, all right. Uh, but I've been loving the past couple of episodes. Uh, you guys have been hitting on some really good points, man, about um, especially the, the Central Park 5 episode when they see us. You know, uh -huh. it's, it's a really hard watch for me. Especially knowing that we're still facing the same type of, you know, trials and tribulations today. Yeah. And ain't no new laws coming out to protect us as black men and women. But anyway, um, Nambi, I hope you're doing good walking yeah. your cricket path with the Lord. Oh, yeah. uh, Niram, I hope you're doing good with your, you know, uh, Grand Architect and mm -hmm. Colonizer Valley out there not beating up on these white people and loving on Mabel. Yeah. Um, I just got two questions for you guys. What? One, no dealing riddles. with love. One, regarding spirituality. <laughs> um, so the first one about love is, do you guys, I know you guys touched on this topic before, but do you think that love languages mm. can make or break a relationship? Okay. And if so, is that something that should be acknowledged at the beginning stages mm -hmm. of a relationship? Mm -hmm. um, Good question. And two, uh, regarding spirituality, do you guys believe that we have free will? Mm. And if so, yeah. what makes you think that we have free will? Yeah. And if you think that we don't have free will, you mm. know, what what argument do you have against that? Mm. You know, um, something we were talking about in psychology classes. Really you know, we are beginning to, as humans, we have reached a level of technology where we are creating artificial intelligence, you know. Um, and it's like we're creating something that can outlive us, something that can kind of, swim and develop in their own consciousness and become a lot, you know, more intelligent that, than we are as humans. Um, and so... At Damn, Skype cut him off. Mm -hmm. uh, he called back, though. See, Skype only has a two-minute limit, you know what? so I'll try I to get that, that in in two minutes. That voicemail about to hang up on me, and I was going to just shut up, but I might as well finish what I was saying. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, if, <laughs> if we as humans, are, you know, have reached this level of technology, 
that we have can create artificial intelligence. Um, what makes us think that we are not the result of a superior race that has come before us and has, you know, created us to think and develop, and we are just experiencing, like, this program autonomy. Because if you think of um, cells in our body in comparison to computers, um, there are more similarities than there are differences. Mm. Um, but anyway, you know, it's just it's something to, to think about as far as, like, the scientific standpoint without really, you know, including, like, religion or, yeah. you know, anything like that, but... Just some food for thought. I love y'all niggas. Uh, yeah. Keep hitting us with that knowledge, that black love. Um, Detroit forever. Y'all stay yeah, up. Bro. Talk to you next time. Peace. Perfect. Thank you. No, those are great questions. I know we got a lot of voicemails today, but I think Monday, he done gave us the episode. Right. Five love language is free will real. Mm-hmm. Write that down. I don't have to. Yes, okay. I said I got it. Okay. That's a good one. I, I, don't, I wonder if we're going to have the same opinion. I don't know. We'll save it for the podcast. Oh, yeah. Okay. Next voice, man. Did you say I was about to get into it? Yeah, you were. Because mm. anyway, we hey, there, oh. Naomi. It's Tamadra. I was calling. Hey, Tamadra. You left that, that I five star. I hope everything is going good on the house end. Um, but I quit that job. Good. Um, Fuck the And I told my boss what it is, and I quit transfer to a new location. Good. I've been there for two weeks, and I already got raised. Damn, yeah, so you done pulled the Nyambi. If the robot ain't working, I don't know who he is. Come on. Picked up the second job doing the same thing, but it's just a different, um, like, it's just a spa, so they're not competitive. Yeah. And so I'm still going to be working on trying to create something of my own under my own name. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Good. Just want to give y'all an update it's about that. And, uh... I'm probably going to call back because I wanted to talk about one of these uh, episodes that I was listening to, but I can't remember which year, yeah. which one it is right now. So I'll leave, leave y'all at this and, uh, again, hope y'all having a good day. Bye. All righty. Good hey for girl. you, sis. I was praying. Look at that. She Look winning. You got to step out on faith, honey. You winning. That's what I'm, you done pulled to Nyambi and worked there two weeks and got another oh, raise. Good God. Mm, won't he do it? Huh. Won't he do it? Love it. Good morning. Good morning. This is a voicemail for Niram and Niambi okay. from the Black Love Matters podcast. Yes. This is I us. Love, mm-hmm. This is beloved FMB. Mm-hmm. I've been following you all for a little while, and I really, really enjoy it. I wanted to leave a comment about Ian Lavanzant okay. and Niambi talking about on the Breakfast Club, Charlemagne the God and Ian La were speaking about her relevance and how she's been talking about healing and being able to own our stories and change the narrative for a long, long time. And now it's just starting to become mainstream. I've discovered that people typically either really, really like Iyanla or they don't like her. I think part of it is because of her style. Mm -hmm. She's very assertive. She is extremely direct Mm -hmm. and she has no problem spitting truth to people that Yep. Otherwise, wouldn't be told to them. Come on. I connected with Iyanla in the 90s when she was writing her series of books. Yes. Um, one of the books that I like the yep. most by her is In the Meantime. Come on. And it I have a lot so of much. notes in that book. I think I, I bought you that book. Yeah. Ooh, I saw book. her at an actual event in Berkeley when she was just becoming very notable for her written work. Yeah. And I was so moved by what she had to say. She really was a therapist for me before I could mm-hmm. afford a therapist. Come on. To be clear, she's not a therapist. No, 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 she is no. a life coach. Yes. And there's a difference. And yes. I think people get confused about it. Absolutely. But being able to hear her perspective and her forceful yet loving and mm-hmm. maternal way of confronting yeah. people when we get stuck in our own muck yeah. was very helpful for me and actually helped me to move into participating in uh, psychotherapy for the last over 10 to 15 years. Mm -hmm. One of the things she did at that book signing was uh, she met everybody individually. And, Mm -hmm. you know, when you meet somebody that you admire, you get a little overwhelmed. And I was a little overwhelmed. And she signed my book and uh, affirmed me. And she said, you are. Okay, she got she left her oh, she could. Okay, because I was getting into it because it is something like she's been an OG in this game, I'm, saying the same things we saying now. Like sis said in the nineties, before it was cute. And I'm not saying that other people weren't doing. It. I'm talking about bringing it to the mainstream to say this is. I need to spread the word and get it out to folks. Like it was not out there like that, it, or coming from a black woman. Absolutely not. Right. I remember when I bought you then. In the meantime, in the meantime is whew, you was going through some. You was going through some things. You had that bad semester. Whew. 
And I was like, I need to do something. It to was help her out and give her some beautiful. encouragement. It was beautiful. And it's one of my favorite book books. It's one of my favorite books. And I was like, That's when I, actually that's what I think I got put on to. Yeah. I said, Who is this? Good morning. Woman? This is beloved SMB leaving a second message okay. for Nir Miambi from the Black Loves Matter podcast, and I love it so much. So I wanted to finish up to say regarding Iyanla Van Zant. She signed my book, and she said, you are the beloved, and gave me lots of positive affirmation, Mm. and I kept that moniker. So my moniker for social media, my email, et cetera, is beloved FMB. FMB, those are the initials for my first, middle, and last name. Mm. But, you know, I think that she is amazing and fantastic and wonderful. Her style is not for everyone. However, Mm. Her um, concern for individuals and how we can get out of our own way and change the narratives of our lives and be responsible and live the lives that we want is very, very relevant. So people can move past her delivery, perhaps, and get more to the crux of what she's trying to say. They'll find that it's very valuable. And um, she is um, certainly a trailblazer, and I'm hopeful that more people get introduced to her and that she does get the credit that she is due. Thank you so much for taking the time to do your podcast. It's absolutely wonderful and affirming, and I think it's important to hear how um, black people are thriving in love and in marriage and relationship and still trying to grow even as they thrive. Yeah. Yeah. Keep on podcasting. God bless you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, but if y'all looking for something in the meantime by Iyanla, that is a classic for anybody. Mm. Brown, white, green, purple, male, fe- it don't it don't matter. It hits, right? Because it's really about what do you do in that meantime, yeah. right? Like when you in the shit, right? The shit done hit. Mm-hmm. You're trying to figure out what's the next way to go, right? But a lot of times you can't turn it around in 24 hours, right? You no. got to be in that space of unknowing and gray and autonomy. And that can be a very lonely, isolating spot where the voices get to talking, right? And mm-hmm. how do you navigate through that space? It's an excellent book. Yeah. yeah. Where's that book at? <sighs> If it's not here, it's probably at my parents' house. Because I got that in undergrad. Like, that's yeah, almost... Yeah, I gave it to look, you. <clears throat> don't be dating me too much, but that's coming on more than double digits. All right. That's almost 15 years I gave you a note and everything. I you know. That note? book is it's probably raggedy. It's probably not held together. Because that book is almost 15 years old. Okay. Mm-hmm. Next voicemail. Yeah. Hey, y'all. Hey. It's D. Hey, AKA D. AKA Black Lives Matter. D. Nigeria. D. Nigeria. D. Nigeria. Yeah. Or, or what is it called? Emails, all that good stuff. Yeah. And reviews. So, Nair, I'm, I'll leave another one. Thank you. I I'm going to wish you guys a happy two year anniversary. Thank you. Thank you very Ow. much. Ow. 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 Um, I've been listening much. to you guys since I was living in Midwest, in Milwaukee. Now I'm in Houston. Mm-hmm. Real quick, like yeah. I said, congratulations. Two years, y'all are doing y'all thing. Yeah. I hope you never stop. <laughs> I don't know if y'all gonna start doing live. I know y'all want to keep y'all, you know, <laughs> identities incognito. Yeah. You know, on the little stealth tip. Don't Hopefully want, not. You know, for long. Don't want nobody not to know who time. y'all is. That's cool. <laughs> um, but I hope y'all start doing it live, and I hope it ends up being in Houston because I will come. Mm-hmm. I just want to get. Uh oh, what happened? They come back. You know that two minute. Is there another option we can use, Nim? Have you researched it? Technology moves quickly. You can't call Google. Oh, it's like it's talking. Oh. oh. Look, this is me. Make sure she okay. Look, yeah. she leave a message? Did she or, look, they say she anything love? else? You know, that's what me and my friends do. Like, say if we bug. Oh, sorry. Uh, I don't know where it cut off at. But it, basically, I was very triggered by when they see us. It's just something yeah, about seeing them. And I think it's just because it's modern day and it's in the 80s. And you think about it, it's like the 80s was yesterday. Yes. You know, and like, it was babies. It, it was years ago, but it's just like, dang. It and I think it's just the fact that they all just thought that they were so right. And then I'm sitting here watching them in these rooms and all I kept yelling was, don't say shit. shit. Don't, don't say, say shit. damn thing. Don't say nothing. But it's like, you get so hyped and you're like, oh, yeah, okay. You know, uh, what's his name? Yassif or Yassirim or whatever yeah. dude with a tall, high top. I'm like, he don't get out this jam. His mama yeah. got this back. And then you know the outcome. You know they yeah. spent mm. years in jail for something they didn't do. Yeah. And it's so triggering. Cause it's, and I just I looked at my boyfriend and I'm like, let me tell you something. Mm-hmm. If that was you, I'm setting Houston off. Yes. I'm setting it off. Yep. I'm grabbing all the yo cousins, my Detroit cousins. Everybody. I'm there with everybody. Uh-oh. I hear it all. Mm-hmm. I'm with you. You got to. 
Mm. You know, she said she said you're going to get them Detroit cousins. Just, Detroit, they, them Detroit cousins don't be playing lose. around. Not much to lose. <laughs> <laughs> That's always Sorry. This voicemail is crazy. Now I see what people be talking about. We gotta <laughs> That's why I just told Niram. Niram, can you do some research? But, uh, real quick. So, like, what? A couple days ago, um, I just started this new job with a big company. Okay. And Congratulations. I feel like Niram may not know who it would be, yeah. but... Uh, Nyambi might be yeah. just because it's a woman's retailer, but I just started in Fancy. the e-com sector, and I'm very yeah. excited about the job. <laughs> I've literally been trying to do this for about a whole year now. I'm just nice. excited to be an e-com. But is yada, 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 All right, so there is, in, my, in the area that I sit in, there is exactly three black people and two are female. Gotcha. There was a little um, a little girl. One of my coworkers brought in her her little girl uh-huh. um, to work. You know, it's very relaxed. You can bring in dogs. If you need gotcha. to bring in your kid, and I think that that's very beautiful. You yeah. know, um, I think that's really cool. Like it's basically sometimes unheard of. Yeah. Um, but long story short, she brings in her daughter. Everyone knows it's her daughter. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, because they're all older, and I'm a newer person, yeah. so I don't know whose daughter it is. But um, they eventually tell me. I'm like, oh, okay. So I'm walking to go get water or whatever the heck I was getting. I don't know if it was lunch. Let me and guess. And we have a, um, a consulting firm that's the white there helping like, out get with water getting and things like that. Mm. And um, first of all, I've been getting real bad, bad vibes. And I know a mm. lot of times my boyfriend, like, females are funny because y'all get these quote-unquote bad vibes. Uh, from people, But it's like my... Woman's intuition was like, it's something true. about you ain't right, and yeah. I don't know if I like you. Yeah. This is, and here it is. I'm walking right past her, you know, flash a little smile, mm-hmm. you know, the smile that makes white people yeah. feel like you're not going to harm them. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. Yeah. And she's like, oh, you're, you're dog. what I say? I guessed Look, it. We instigators. No, no, don't stop. I Your guessed daughter, it. She, she tried it. Because, you know, white people love doing All right, that shit. No, she um, tried So I'm like, huh? I don't have a kid. I was like, I don't know what you mean. And she's just like, uh, she's like, your daughter. And no. I said, oh, I don't have any kids. No, okay. like, that's not. And you're trying I'm to give her a lot. Because I know that at this moment, she's just like, oh, yeah. black, you must have a kid. Yep. And, I'm, you know, I'm letting it go, yeah. whatever. But it's the comedy that she said after. She's like, yeah. oh, well, I saw some little, like, black girl running around. I thought that she maybe, said, you know, black she's girl like, running and around. then she turns around. And she's like, whose kid is that? So like a little black girl and everybody, like someone, I can hear it like a pin drop. So people are like, oh, oh my God. No, you like, didn't. what is she saying out loud? Wow. And I'm standing there and I'm looking and I'm like, do I slap the hell out of her? Yes. And, and not keep and my And then get the baby and had a baby slap it too. <gasps> so I'm like, you know what, I'm going to walk away. But oh my as I'm walking away, I hear somebody like, hey, that's um, Yvonne's daughter. I don't think Danae has kids. <laughs> Mm-hmm. This is somebody who happened to whatever. be white. Look, <gasps> and I'm just like, really, like I, you, I think it's just like a little black girl. Colonizers, like, they just see a black child and like, can't even. Oh, do you know whose daughter that is? That right. would've been the safest route. Yeah. Oh, who's this that cute baby? The safest yeah. route. Yeah. Just like you don't go up to every, you know, rounded stomach woman and say, oh, <laughs> yeah, just, you, just, you know, you carry on a conversation yeah. and when they start talking about pregnancy, then you say, oh my God, congratulations. Yes. You don't just go around doing that. Exactly. And it's just like, <gasps> Lord have mercy. They and I'm telling you, the, the little bites of like racism down here is so funny to me. <laughs> Those just, microaggressions, like, them hits. Lord, but that hits. just like triggered because it was uh, just like, really? Yeah. You couldn't take the time to just ask if ask. like, if I had a kid in the first place, you just ended black girl comment, is this? Oh, I saw some little yeah. black girl Say running around. It's like, Lord beauty. have mercy. Lord have mercy. Yeah. Anywho. They'll try you. They will try you. They well, they tried her. They <laughs> tried and accomplished. <laughs> they tried and accomplished her. <laughs> Finish her. <laughs> <laughs> they tried to do motor combat. Right, right. Uh-uh. Let's see what else well, we, we got. got here. This I week. told you. It's good. Though. Yeah. They also different too. Hey guys, hey. my name is Danielle, hey, and Danielle. I'm somewhat of a new listener. Um, but I did want to say that I thoroughly enjoy your podcast, you. especially since I am a black millennial who oh, is also married to a yeah. black man. Um, a love story. And 
it really helps me get throughout my work day because I'm in corporate America as sure. well. And like you say, these colonizers <laughs> do be tripping. They do. Um, but I did want to talk to you guys about the when they see us mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. documentary yeah. um, that was, well, biopic that was on Netflix. I will honestly say I cried. Yeah. And on yeah, every episode, but yeah. yes, episode four took me out was when it? Corey was reaching for his Ooh. mother. I could definitely say that that actor acted his butt off. He needed off. Emmy. I, he um, needed. He needed. But Emmy. yes, thank you guys oh, for giving me something to listen to every day at work, and please continue. And yeah, Black Love Matters. Thank you. Uh, thank I love you. it. Thank you. Thank you. you. We love that. We love that. Oh, we still going? We still yeah, going? Baby, still oh, going. I'm so excited. All this love. Yeah, this is making my heart smile. All this love. Did Nero make y'all do this? No. Oh, okay. I don't even know these people. Not Nero emailing Nero, people. Man, I, I oh, what's up? What's the Shan? It's Shan. Oh. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. I know y'all niggas by voice now. This message, um, I wanted to comment on the When They See Us series. It was amazing, and as a parent, I purposely shared the truth with my Mm. five-year-old. Yeah. I purposely allow her to tell me what somebody said freely without her feeling like she's going to get in trouble because there needs to be some type of transparency when it comes to what people do and say in this world that she hears and that she sees. I do tell her that certain words mean this, and when this happens, make sure you do not go to this type of person. If you're lost, make sure you go to someone with a lot of kids mm, and that's a, good tip. Um, a mom or a dad with more than one child. You never leave where I last saw you so I could come find you. Like You have to that dialogue before something happens, before you see something in the news because I don't know, these people out here are, too, are just mm-hmm. crazy and right. you just never right. know what somebody's up to, you just never know what somebody's going to do. As far as police, I tell her that everybody cannot be trusted so and unfortunately mm-hmm. police are just people that dress up in a uniform sometimes. Yep. It doesn't come with a code, it doesn't come with um, integrity anymore and you just have to really be honest when it comes to brown boys I don't know how um, parents do it because no. I don't have any sons but I know yeah. I have it's hard. it's hard but uh, yeah oh, it's everybody needs to watch that mm-hmm. right. let's see what else Shane got oh she got a part two for us yeah she got a part two oh, nice. it's me again hey what's up girl um, what I do think uh, our inner cities need to do more of and every um, school needs to have is uh, a law class or a law elective um, that is updated to the year that we are in Mm -hmm. as far as like what your rights are, what you do when you come in contact with the law, what is legal, what is not legal, what what do you do when you're in this Mm -hmm. type of situation for our youth because face it, um, most kids today live with a one parent in the household or a sibling that is raising them yeah. or if they have both parents in the household, they're working long, crazy hours yeah. and a lot of discussions get missed. And if they can exactly. be at school exactly. more hours in the day than they are with their parents and still get that knowledge and still get that education on what the laws are and update their parents and update themselves, I think they will be better off. Mm-hmm. And a mandatory economic and budgeting mm-hmm. elective. Yeah, I agree. That's yeah. It. <laughs> no, you're right. You ain't telling right. the truth. Yeah, Thank right. you for sharing. Was that our last one here? No, we, we got one more. Oh, we got one more. We got yeah, one they more. just gave us so much love. I think they're trying to feel, make us feel good for our two year. Hey, <laughs> we need it. Whatever works. <laughs> If that's what it takes. It Hi, Nero. And Nyambe. What's that, Carlos? And Carlos. Oh, and Chris and Carlos. Guys. What? So, we don't, we kind of consider you guys as like our older cousins. Okay, uh-huh. okay. So, Chris's great grandmother is on her deathbed, and we haven't seen her in what, six years, babe? Okay. About six years now. Yeah. And 
I asked her, like, it's going to be, yeah. it's going to be a detrimental amount to go see her. It's going to, it's going to drag into our savings. Yeah. Into our, and we're trying to buy a house in the next two years, and yeah. that's going to drag into that amount yeah. uh, to go, to go see her uh, funeral. And we want to know mm, yeah. if it is worth being going to pay that amount to see her, or do we just send a nice gift? Mm. Yeah. I say we go see her. And this is not my grandmother. This is Chris's grandmother. Yeah. Um, and Chris says that he just wants to send a nice gift. Well, I want to send a nice gift because she didn't have a big influence on my bringing up in my childhood, my my livelihood. So, yeah. but but that's still your great grandmother, yeah. and I understand that. But I would want to pay that money to go and see somebody who actually helped me grow as a person. Yeah. I don't feel that she helped me grow as a person. So we need you guys to help. Mm. Um, because really, we can't depend on any of our other family. Uh, we don't got no really other family because they all know they know good. Back up on the good as we all say. So please, people love some of the advice. Thank you so much. Alrighty, well we got. Signing off. <laughs> all right, bye. Well, all right. First off, condolences. Yeah, Deep condolences. Sympathy. Sorry yeah. about that. Oh wait, she ain't passed yet. I'm sorry. No. But, <laughs> <laughs> Look, now we the gutter snipes. Right. <laughs> Condolences. Or you just in a good energy, right? Whenever yeah. an elder's sick. I don't know. What do you think about this now? Um I think the fact that she really didn't have like a really influence in her his life. Yeah. And he really from what what it seems like Chris really don't know her like that. Yeah. To really like feel anything yeah. that, you know, I would save your money. And the thing is I wouldn't go see what her on her deathbed, but save your money for the to pay your final respects at the funeral, funeral right? Yeah. And at least that'll give you a chance to see other family members who may have had a uh, impact on your life as well. You can be ever able to grieve with your family as well. Yeah, because that's what I was thinking. It, that's the piece I was going to ask. Like, yeah. it might not even be for you or for your grandmother, but is there somebody else that needs you, right? right. Like, is, does your mother need you? Your aunt need you, right? That's going to, that you know, we all know how we grieve. That's going to fall to pieces. Right, because my mama ain't it. Right, like that. It's because sometimes it's not even about you and the departed, right? It's you being a support system for the folks who um, who recently lost someone. Like I think about like different friends. Like there are mm-hmm. certain friends that, of course, I know their family. We might not be the closest, but I know if certain people in their family pass away, I'm flying out not just for the person who passed, but for to be a support system for my friend. Does that make sense? Right, right, right. right. So I think that's the key that pays in it, right? Does mom or aunt or somebody, aunt or uncle or dad, do they really need that support? Because that'd be then, is it the great-grandmother or the grandmother? I thought it was the great-grandmother. Oh, are we really going through the generations then? Right. Um, well, then, yeah, that's even a little more disconnected. But you don't know. Like, sometimes yeah. the elders be raising folks you don't know. So I will ask that type of question, too. Right. And then if you do have that, right? Because you don't never know how the Lord works. Right? That's let bed, maybe not. But the funeral, if you have the money to do it. But I think also you just have to really ask yourself, are you going to be at closure with that, right? right Is right. that something that's going to bring you peace? And if that's the answer is yes, I think it's okay. But do ask yourself, is there anybody that you need to be there to support Boy. you, right? Because you know, if somebody would pass very close in your life, you know, it's some folks who come running, mm-hmm. right? It don't matter if they were close to that person or not; they're coming to support you. So that's right. the only thing I play in there. Like, there's a handful of four or five people that I'm going into my savings account for. That if I need to fly to be where I need to be to support them, I'm gonna do that. But if none of those are falling in that category, um, I was I would send condolences, yeah, right? Send, send condolences, send a ham. Yeah. Um, and the I would say save the money for like the actual funeral, right? So yeah. she's on her deathbed. You know, sorry for your loss, but yeah. uh, maybe that's something that can be, I would say, beneficial, but a, a more better use of money spent. Yeah. Um, going to the funeral, paying your last respect, Being as well as yeah. spending time with fam- uh, additional family, family members, members there. Yeah. Versus like going before she passes. Right? Absolutely. Especially if you don't have uh, that type of connection with her. And from what I see. From what I hear, it really don't seem like you have that type of connection. So, and then also, and I'm thinking yeah. about the family aspect too, right? Don't be, don't tell your family, don't be like, I don't got no money, I'm buying the house. Like, don't add the buying the house mm-hmm. part, right? Just be like, you know, me and my partner, it just wasn't set up. We weren't able to make it, but right. y'all know, because you know how family can be. Yeah. So mentally prepare yourself for that and already have your line set. Don't don't tell them too much. What I like to don't tell them all the sausage making. I don't know what the mm-hmm. hell you got to save your money for or what it's for or what it ain't just for. Just tell them rent is high yeah. as hell. Yeah. Or just be like, you know, it just ain't work. It ain't in work. times of our 1.5 and say, woo, you know, I pay one, one point okay, times man. five or what I'm paying now. But I love, then you got to pivot. But, but I, I loved her so, I loved her I love so much her. and I'm so glad she's at peace. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I think those are the questions you got to ask. And yeah. that's it. 
Ooh. We're close. We made this episode. Oh, this is a we long made episode. It. It's almost a two hour episode. Oh, my goodness. Y'all love all them voicemails. Hey, but keep I love it, though. It was keep so them nice. bitches coming. Naomi, I love them voicemails. I, know I love hearing y'all. I love talking to y'all. It's almost like y'all in the bedroom with us. Ciao. <laughs> All right, to submit your black love stories, <laughs> uh, go to blacklovematters.com and to submit a question for Kitchen Table Talk, shoot us an email at blacklovematters.gmo.com and to leave a comment about anything that we talked about, you can do that on Black Loves Matters, SoundCloud, Stitcher, and don't forget that voicemail at 508-784-1111. That's 508-784-1111. Um, talk to y'all later. Remember, love, love is, is ever evolving. evolving. Peace. Peace.